You are now rocking with the hottest boxing podcast in the land. True Media Boxing Radio with your host, Coach Malachi Williams. True, true, true. man what's up man it's our boy coach malachi williams in the building and we back to media boston radio we are back we are back we are back let me make sure that everyone can hear me make sure the audio is sounding good i think everyone can hear me i think everyone can as a matter of fact let me uh let me do this let me make sure let me turn the volume up here all right i think everybody can hear me if everybody, if everybody can hear me man just uh, give me a thumbs up from what i'm hearing it seems like everything all systems are go um all right cool cool pauline said yes everything good all right, cool. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. Um, um, someone sent me a text letting me know that King uh, Ryan Garcia was was live. You know, Ryan Garcia is going Instagram. He's on Instagram live. I'm like, yeah. All right. Well, let me know. Let me know what he's talking about. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Let me. Yeah, let, let me know. Let me know. Let me know what he's talking about. Anyways, you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, man. You know everything Gucci over here. I'm just you know today good Monday. It did start out kind of rainy a little bit. The weather was kind of like you know, raining this morning. It's been raining in Florida for the past three days. And then now the sun is out. So it's very sunny and bright right now. So it is what it is. Um, I, something I want to talk about, man, because I received a phone call yesterday. I can't really say exactly, you know what I mean? Uh, I can't really say exactly who you know, who told me the information or whatever. But, you know, uh, you, guys, you guys know how I get down. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it to you as straight as I possibly can, you know, with, uh, without no filter. But um, this person said off the record, so this is off the record, so I can't say. But I think, but I think that um, I, you know, I believe it. And I'm gonna tell you why I believe it because, and I think a lot of you guys in the chat are believe it as well, because we're looking at the ways that uh, Benavidez has been moving. Not only well, we'll just say Team David Benavidez has Team Benavidez has been moving. Team Benavidez consists of Al Heyman, uh, Jose Senior. And uh, Samson Lewitz. Uh, Samson Lewitz, I think that's his, his manager. That's his manager or something of that sort, right? Either manager or promoter or whatever. I think that's his promoter. So, um, and I think his dad is his manager. So, you know, we've been hearing a lot of stuff going on, and I do get it. A lot of people are mad, is upset with Canelo. He's not fighting the Mexican monster. He's ducking the Mexican monster. He has the power to choose and pick whoever it is he wants to fight. That is true. He does have the power to pick and choose whoever it is he wants to fight. Those are the facts. Now, I want to cover the obvious. You know, these are the questions that some a lot of people are not asking. You know, a lot of people who are mad at Canelo, I get it. I ain't here to apologize for Canelo. I let uh, Canelo uh, fans do that. But um, I'm going to say this. The question I have and I always had was this here. Why did David Benavidez, team Benavidez, why they didn't... And try to why they why they didn't enforce their mandatory. I have a bunch of receipts that's saying conflicting things. Cause you got you got people are saying, oh man, well, you know, Canelo this and Mauricio said that, and then you know, Canelo that and Mauricio said this, and and Jose did this, and David did that, and nothing has been consistent. The only thing that been that's been consistent with me is there's obvious something going on that team Benavidez. Canelo 
dissenting bodies, Mauricio Suleiman, WBC in particular, as well as the rest of them, but in particular, the WBC and uh, Samson Lewis, Al Heyman, everybody is on board. And I'm going to tell you what I mean by that, and I'm going to prove it to you. Let's give everybody that's here a round of applause. Everybody is on the same team. Contrary to popular belief, contrary to Canelo fans think, contrary to what Benavidez fans think, the reality of the situation is everybody's on the same team. And I'm going to prove it to you. Um, let's see. Uh, let's get into the show. Let's see what we have here. Shout out to, shout out to RJ, man. Hey, okay. For dropping that half for damn dub on your boy. Hey, Leroy. Super Jack. Received. Playtime's over, boy. Boy. He say, um, he say, I'm on two of those weed brownies right now. Lord, you on two? Ooh, Lord, have mercy, boy. I feel sorry for you, bro. You on two brownies? Shit. Um, bro, I mean, shit. I man, hell no. Um, anyways, he said, apologizing to not to apologize. Apologizing to not apologize. What up, Wakanda nigga killer? <laughs> Niggas mad at me, boy. Hey, Jack, shout out to Jack and her dad there. Salute. What's going on, sis? Shout out to Dunk Flush. Shout out to um, JR Spock. What's going on, fam? Shout out to Fabian Terry, the wise one. Shout out to uh, J uh, Jamie from New York, Gertz in the building, Miguel Gomez. Yeah, it, it, you know, it kills me. Like, I know people who get mad. Oh, nigga said so about Bacardi. You're attacking black people. And I'm like, I sit back and I look at these guys who say this dumb ass shit. And I just like, you know what? This, these are not the brightest people in the world, you know. And um, yeah, man, white people evil. They did this to us. They did that. To us. They slayed our ancestors. They did A B C and D. Whoop the whoop the whoop. And yeah, man, you know we ain't on that shit. Everything's it's black. Everything black. This and that. And I'm like, these are some of the arguments that these guys are making, while you know, while showing pride in Wakanda, something that two white men created. That you said that. These very same people, white people, are evil and they're the oppressors and all that stuff there, and they're the colonizers and all that stuff there. So you are identifying with what the quote-unquote colonizer created for you, your utopia. Am I missing something here? Anyways, let, let's move on from that. Um, shout out to JR, man. Shout out to JR, man, for uh, dropping that half a dub on your boy. You know what time it is. Down from the bar, there's a platform stage. People pimping, pimping, sharp as razor blades. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Um, yeah, man, so so I want to talk, I want to let you guys know, all these people are on the same team. There's an understanding of what's going on as it relates to David Benavidez, mandatory status, not mandatory status. Um, it will be enforced, but it won't be enforced. We got to mitigate the circumstances. Uh, we have to wait on this and wait on that. Bro, like, I'm telling you, it's all smoke and mirrors. You got, you got Canelo fans, Benavidez fans on Twitter right now going back and forth. Even on YouTube, going back and forth about who ducking who. You know, remember that song about um, Aretha Franklin, uh, R.I.P. to the legend Aretha Franklin. Who's zooming who? Y'all remember that song? Who's zooming who? This is the episode of Who's Ducking Who, right? And everybody is on the same team. I have receipts. Um, let's get into the show. Read my opening monologue, and then we are going to get with it. <coughs> the truth on why Benavidez skipped the WBC petition for a Canelo fight. Rumors have been spread around Twitter, YouTube, and other social media outlets about who Canelo Alvarez will be fighting next. Don't nobody seem to know. Everyone is guessing. Um, but everything, everybody's saying it's going to be Jamal Charlo next. That's what they say. I won't know anything official until I officially see the announcement. Um, boxing fans on Twitter, especially on Twitter, Lord have mercy, boy, Twitter is the wild, wild west. Boxing fans on Twitter have been debating, yelling, screaming, attacking each other on whether Canelo is ducking David Benavidez, better known as the Mexican monster. True, true, true. Mexican monster, right? Uh, Canelo is one of the few fighters that garners that much attention in North America. I said North America because I don't, I don't, I, I seriously doubt he garners that type of attention anywhere outside of, outside of North America. 
outside of North America, I don't think everybody in the UK like, oh man, I like in the UK, I don't think they have a fever for Canelo the way they do over here in North America. I don't think they have a fever for him in Japan or just anywhere else in the world outside of North America. When I when I say North America, I'm not even talking about Canada. I'm talking about the United States of America, even though Canada is a part of North America, and Mexico. I don't know what it's like over there in Mexico. I don't know. Depending on who you talk to, you know, you'll hear different things, right? But that's neither here nor there. So I'm going to be specifically talking about the United States of America in particular. Now, uh, Canelo is one of the few fighters that, that I say that garners uh, the most attention in North America. Why? Because he is the face of boxing. He makes the most money than any fighter in North America. He has commercial endorsements corporate sponsorships, but most of all, he has the power. True, true, true. What power are you talking about, coach? He has the power to do whatever the fuck he wants to do. And the powers that be in the sport of boxing are bowing down to him. As a matter of fact, the powers that be have made a conscious decision to back up Canelo in his quest to pick and choose whomever he wants to fight. True, true, true. I'm going to tell you why. Very similar to what they did with Floyd Mayweather. When Floyd Mayweather was around, I got to bring Floyd up. When Floyd Mayweather was around, it was the exact same thing. Exact same thing. Nothing has changed. But as it relates to David Benavidez, he is currently the WBC intern champion. He is also the mandatory challenger to Canelo's WBC strap. According to Michael Benson, not according to Coach Malachi Williams, but according to Michael Benson. According to Michael Benson, David Benavidez will be officially set as Canelo's mandatory um, you know, Canelo Alvarez's WBC mandatory challenger in March. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. The word salad, the word salad, the word salad. But I got some receipts to contradict everything what Michael Benson is saying from, from Mauricio Suleiman. WBC president Mauricio Suleiman has reaffirmed, reaffirmed. Suleiman has not clarified when fight will be ordered, when the fight will be ordered, right? but indicated Canelo will be free to face another opponent in May. Let's back that up, rewind. David Benavidez will be officially set as Canelo's WBC mandatory challenger in March. So what they're saying is he, he, he's not, he hasn't officially been set. I want y'all to listen to the word salad. Now, I remember a time before the Canelo, before Benavidez fought Caleb Plant fight, Benavidez was the mandatory. I remember this. Then um, it was said by Mauricio Suleiman, hey, now the winner of this fight between Caleb Plant and Benavidez will officially be the mandatory. So he was the mandatory before. No, 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 he wasn't the mandatory before. No, no, it was some, it, you know, you got articles where you said he was the mandatory. Now, okay, all right, I get it. Okay, for argument's sake. So after, so the winner of the Caleb Plant and Benavidez fight, he will be the mandatory. Yes, exactly. Whoever win that fight will be the mandatory. Bam, bam. Later on down the line, um, Canelo fights Jamel Tallo. You know, he fights John Ryder. Then he fights Jamel Tallo. Okay, cool. Uh, next thing you know, Benavidez is fighting Demetrius Andrade, the slick black fighter that everyone, that a lot of uh, Andrade fans said that, hey, Canelo was ducky. So he fights them after being the mandatory officially again to fight Canelo. Now we're hearing that David Benavidez will be officially set as Canelo's WBC mandatory challenger in March. WBC President Mauricio Suleiman has reaffirmed this. Suleiman has not clarified when the fight will be ordered. So he the mandatory, but it has to be ordered. So first he was a mando. Then he was officially the mando. Now it has to be 
ordered after being reaffirmed that he's the man though. True, true, true. Are you, are you guys following me so far? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Now, based on a phone call that I received yesterday, I cannot disclose where this came from. We'll just say sources say, or hold, we'll just say this. You know, I went to the script club, not strip club, script club. I was talking to Bowlegged Kim, who was serving drinks to Big Booty Judy and her man, Man Man. They was having an argument about a conversation that they overheard from Pookie, who got in a wrestling match with the bouncer, who was arguing with Chico Stick who was hanging out shooting dice with Hobo Sam, who accidentally bumped into Pochot Willie. And based on all of that, that's where my source came from. True, true, true. Just wanna throw that out there. So based on a phone call that I received yesterday, I believe Samson Lewis, Al Heyman, Jose Benavidez Sr. And we can't forget about uh, Mauricio Suleiman, can't forget about him, might have worked out a deal with Mauricio Suleiman or something like that. Oh, I got something to show y'all today. There's something Team Benavidez isn't telling us. Jose Sr. and Benavidez know exactly what's going on. David Benavidez hasn't petitioned the WBC to fight Canelo for a reason. There's a reason, right? Um, and it's because Benavidez is going along with the plan. We're playing that here, coach. No, man, no. We 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 on an online ride for Benny B there. We got shooters. We gonna let everybody know what time is. What plan you talking about? You finna see what's going on. I'm finna show y'all some receipts. And the plan is to allow Canelo to do whatever it is that he wants to do. In the process, Team Benny B there's can mess it up. Team Benny B there's can't mess up the apple cart by trying not to enforce the mandatory status. So they can't mess the apple, apple cart up. They can't be out there like Club Lane, Full Court Press, whatever, because everybody know what's going on. You know, some would say, man, but Benavidez, no, he can't do anything because Canelo is Canelo, and if he tries to force the action, you know, um, you know, he'll lose his mandatory status or he'll piss off the people and the powers that be, whatever. There is some truth to that. There is some truth to that. Um, Canelo was in a position he do whatever he wants to do, and he has the backing of Mauricio Suleiman, Al Heyman, as well as Samson Lewis. Everyone is on the same team. Contrary to popular belief, right? I know it doesn't fit, you know, what's been pushed, but everybody's on the same team. I'm telling you. Uh, T. Benavidez has agreed not to enforce his mandatory status. Meaning Canelo won't be stripped. This is what I mean by that. Meaning, this is what we're going to skip to. Canelo won't be stripped by the IBF, WBA, WBO, nor the WBC. This is what this means. Canelo has become that powerful. Mauricio Suleiman, nor the other sanctioning bodies, will force Canelo to do anything. Canelo is that powerful in this world of boxing. As I said before, what does that mean, guys? Canelo won't be stripped by the IBF, WBA, WBO, nor the WBC. Everybody is in cahoots. I hope you are seeing this. Al Heyman, uh, Samson Lewis, Jose Benavidez, Sr., and, and David, as well as Mauricio Suleiman, are all on the same team when it comes to the cash cow and the face of boxing. Saul Canelo Alvarez. True, true, true. So the fake outrage that we once saw from Jose Sr. is exactly what it is. Fake outrage. While boxing fans online fight and bicker over whether Canelo is ducking David Benavidez or not, hell, we even hear now that David Benavidez is the one that's really ducking Canelo. True, true, true. Nah, Coach, what it is now, see you. Remember JBN called the show yesterday? The JBN called the show last week. Nah, Coach, nah, what it is now, see you looking at it all wrong. Canelo ain't ducking the Mexican monster. The Mexican monster really ducking Canelo. That's what it is. True, true, true. You feel me? To this day. Really, though. Anyways, anyways, all of them are working together. <laughs> boxing the dirty game, man. Ain't this a dirty game? Ain't this a dirty game? It's a boxing. Boxing is a dirty game. They all have one common goal, guys. And as I said before, that's to back up Canelo or whatever it is he decides to do. You get what I'm saying? As long as it's good for business. 
As I told you guys, you see, Booker Ray always talking about, well, you know, the business of boxing doesn't work that way, this and that, this and that. Boxing is 90% business. 95% business, 5% boxing. I went from 90, 90%, now I'm going to 95%. Sex and the bodies are being controlled by what they've been, by, by what they've been being controlled by. The power brought brokers in boxing have always controlled the sanction of bodies. These are the facts. What is the IBF? What is the WBA? Newly crowned WBO. You know, they, the WBO came in, you know, they, they became official in 1988. And uh, newly crowned WBO. And uh, of course, you know the WBC. The WBC and the WBA, Lord have mercy. True, true, <laughs> true. As long as it's good for business, we know what time it is. David Benavidez is not a part of the plan, and he knows it. Some say that Canelo gonna fight David Benavidez in May. I don't know. I don't have any sources that's telling me that. Everything that I'm hearing is saying that David Benavidez will not see any parts of Canelo in 2024, if ever. Canelo knows it. Al Heyman knows it. Samson Lewis knows it. Who is Samson Lewis? That's the promoter of David Benavidez. And T. Benavidez knows it. They know exactly what time it is. What do you guys think about David Benavidez not trying to enforce his mandatory status with the WBC? And I think I know why. Let's get everybody that's here a round of applause. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I got, I, got, I got a couple of things I want to show you guys. You know, because there's been an argument. I've been, I've been watching you guys on Twitter and social media. You know, again, I don't want to leave any names out and all that stuff there. You know, again, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. But, uh, all right, let's see. Uh, uh, so, this is what was said back in, I got an article from Mauricio Suleiman. Uh, before we get into the show, I got to say all praises due to the most high, the most exalted, the greatest human being on the planet Earth. There's no one does it better, Mr. Al Heyman. Well, you know, I guess I got to be like everybody else and saying Al Heyman. <laughs> I can quit my job now, baby. Six figures, baby. You feel me? I'm about to but, but a name, a name. Do you have a name? Oh, nah, nah. I ain't got no name, you know. Name them names, man. <laughs> they know who they is. Name them names, <laughs> please. The <laughs> names need to be they named. Know who they is. <laughs> the Mexican monster. I don't want nobody to get mad now, but you guys already know what's going on. I have a very, very smart audience in the chat. You guys are very smart. Um, so you guys know what's going on. Whether you team Canelo or team Benavidez, this is the reality of the situation. I don't know, I'm going to break this shit down like a 57 Chevy. If you're sitting here watching the show, hate watching, we got over 400 in here, less than 200, and um, a little over 200 likes. If you're sitting here watching the show, hate watching, don't want to hit the like button, rally. Get them. No, fuck you. Fuck the plane you flew in on. Fuck them shoes. Fuck the socks with the bell on it. Fuck them cheap ass cigars. Fuck your yuck mouth teeth. Fuck your hairpiece. Fuck your chocolate. Fuck Guy Ritchie. Fuck Prince William. Fuck the Queen. This is America. My president is black and my Lambo is blue, nigga. Now get the fuck out my hotel room. And if I see you in the street, I'm slapping the shit out of you. Them gang say, Coach, why you say Benny Benavidez won't activate his mandatory? It's not till it's not March yet. Sir, um, Dem Gaines, the March shit is something new. March is a goalpost mover. If you've been following this story very well between Benavidez, being the mandatory stuff like that, this is something new. Like what we're not going to do, we're not going to pick and choose what Mauricio, what what we what Mauricio Suleiman says to apply. We got to look at everything. Mauricio Suleiman says something totally different prior to March. So this is what I see going on. Depending on what side of the fence people are on, they want to pick and choose which argument they want to use. Why not looking at it? Wait a minute. When Mauricio Suleiman said this over here, he's saying this right there, and now he's saying March. This is not what he's been saying. This is not what he's been saying from day one. We're not going to pretend that Mauricio Suleiman, that's what he always been saying. Bullshit. True, true, true. I got the receipts. I got the receipts. I got the receipts. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Anyways, anyways, I have something right here, right? We got what Michael Benson said that Mauricio Suleiman said on and, and, um, February the 18th. Back when Mauricio Suleiman beat, back when Caleb Plant beat, uh, back when um, David Benavidez beat Caleb Plant, Mauricio Suleiman said something totally different. He said with the win of Benavidez, 
now holds the interim WBC middleweight title, which he already has, and, and he has a spot as the mandatory challenger to the undisputed champ, Saul Canelo Alvarez. It was a gutsy performance from Plant, who controlled the fight early before Benavidez started to realize, started to really close the fight distance, land power shots later in the round. This is something uh, Mauricio Suleiman said back then, right? When he fought Caleb Plant last year. And the winner of that fight was supposed to be the mandatory to fight Saul Canelo Alvarez. He didn't say nothing about, well, we're going we to reinforce and, and, and reinforce the mandatory in March of 2024. He didn't say that. That's not what he said. Anyways, 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 anyways. Um, now, again, it's not a big deal to me. You know, I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. Just let you know, hey, man, everybody ain't on the same, everybody ain't on the same thing. I get it. If you're a Canelo fan, Canelo can't do anything wrong. He's the greatest fighter of all time. Um, and, um, you know, you know, um, he, he's Superman. I get it. I understand Canelo fans very, very well. I mean, not, the, not necessarily the fans, but the radicals. The Canelo radicals, the, the Canelo man fans, I get you guys very, very well. Trust me, I get it. Um, and then the Benavidez fans. I get that too, you know, Benavidez this and that and yada, yada, yada. And I see Benavidez fans and I understand their frustration, but it seems like that, hey man, you guys are, are being a lot more, I think you guys are missing the plot on this here. But everybody's on the same team. Everybody understands and knows what's going on. This is not no grand conspiracy or anything like that. Everybody know what the fuck going on. I'm saying the people, who control the show, like, Benavidez doesn't know what's going on. Can they make a fight with Canelo? The, the, the answer to that is no. Why? Because the sanctioned bodies won't let him. Hell, Mauricio Suleiman don't have to say, he doesn't have to say that, hey, we're gonna, we gonna wait till March to make it official or enforce it. You wanna know why? I'm gonna tell you why. Let me show you something. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I need to pull this up. As a matter of fact, let me pull this up. Let me pull this up on, on WBC's, on Maurice, not Maurice Suleiman, Michael Benson. Let's go to Michael Benson. As a matter of fact, I don't have to go to Michael Benson. I have it right here on my page. Go to Twitter right quick. I'm finna drop the phone lines in a minute. I'm gonna go right to my page. Let's go right here, shit. Cause I retweeted it. That's why I retweet stuff, so I can use it as a source, a, 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 a source of reference. Uh... Michael Benson, where you at, sir? All right, here we go, right there. Oh, okay, let's blow this up right quick. Blow this up right quick. I want y'all to listen to the language very, very well. I pick up on every goddamn thing. I pick up on everything. Let's do this right quick. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, when it comes to this boxing shit, y'all know what time of TIA is. We gonna get in the show, we gonna cook. We running things. Yep, that's right. I'm running things. I'm running things. Cream corn. That's why they call me that. Smooth. I got more measure for your pleasure. Stick with me, baby. I'll have you farting through silk. <laughs> and let a nigga mess with me. I'll jump on him. All 93 pounds of pure dynamite. <laughs> so, I'm finna show y'all something. <laughs> um... Right here, shout out to uh, Michael Benson. Shout out to Michael Benson. I don't know who the guy is, but shout out to him. This is what Michael Benson say right here. David Benavidez will officially be set as Canelo's WBC mandatory, ma mandatory challenger in March. Let's start right there. What the fuck does that mean? So what he's saying is, what he said prior to the Caleb Plant and Benavidez outcome He's saying that, yeah, he was the mandatory, but he's not, now he's saying he will officially be the mandatory in, in March of this year. But it goes further, it goes further. WBC uh, President Mauricio Suleiman has reaffirmed. What did he reaffirm? He reaffirmed that uh, David Benavidez will officially be set as Canelo's mandatory. But guess what? <laughs> guess what? This is where the rubber hits the road. Y'all check this out. Suleiman has not clarified when fight will be ordered, but indicated Canelo will be free to face another opponent in May.
So let me get this straight. Again, I'm not tripping. I'm not team Canelo. I'm not team Benavidez. I'm going to leave that to you guys to fight it out online. I, Coach Malachi, I don't give a damn. I, I'm not emotionally invested in Canelo. I'm not emotionally invested in Benavidez. I'm not emotionally invested in any of these fighters today. I'm, I'm emotionally invested in my old school fighters. You guys know me. Hagler, uh, motherfucking uh, 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 Willie Pep, Ezra Charles, doggone uh, 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 Sugar Ray Robinson, you know, James Lights, I told you, I'm, I'm emotionally invested in them. I know what the fuck going on right now today. You get what I'm saying? I get it. But let's let's start right. Let's start right there. Let, let, let's go back and look at this one more time. Suleiman has not clarified when the fight will be ordered, but indicated Canelo will be free to face another opponent in May. Do you guys don't see what's going on? You guys don't see what's going on? So, wait a minute now. Do we we got to wait. He, he ain't really the mandatory yet. It got to be, it got to be doggone, it got to be ordered. He ain't never say he was the mandatory last year. Bullshit. Got an article right here. Got an article right here that say something totally different. From Mariso Suleiman. I remember like it was yesterday. Me and Steve Kim and, and uh, somebody else. We was at, we was at, uh, I think, um, right, was it, um. Uh, Frank Stallone, all of, we was at the fight in LA watching it at Tom's Watch Bar. So, Mauricio Suleiman is moving the goalposts again. Now, if you're a Canelo fan, you feel something totally different. I get it. But the reality of the situation is this this is what's going on. Samson Lewis know what's going on, uh, which, who is Team Benavidez, they know what's going on. Everybody is allowed. Guess what they said right there? But indicated Canelo will be free to face another opponent in May. So what's the point of, of, of reaffirming and, and clarifying in March that Benavidez will be the mandatory if you're still going to allow Canelo to do whatever the hell it is he want to do? And they're going to have to wait until the fight gets ordered by the WBC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to hold on. What well, we got to wait now? She, what is that? Hold on, we got to wait till it get ordered. She, he, he going to be the Mando in March when he was already the Mando, but then what is now? We got to wait till March to get ordered. But even if it do, but even if it not ordered, we got to wait in March for it to be clarified. So we got to wait till March for it to get clarified. Yeah. But then after it get clarified, we still got to wait until the mandatory gets ordered. Okay. So you reaffirmed he's the mandatory. Yeah. You got to wait to March for it to get clarified. Yeah. But then after that get clarified, we don't know when he's going to order the fight for it to happen. That's right. But, but when, but, 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 um, and, um, last year when he fought doggone, uh, plant, it was he was said that whoever win this fight is gonna be the mentor. Yeah, that's right. Oh, okay, I get it. True, true, true. Anyways, anyway, let's get ready to drop these phone lines, man. It is what it is, man. Y'all know what time of TI is. Um, let's go. You wanna talk some shit? Call me. Start some shit, bitch. Sup, fool? You gonna talk shit about me, homie? Where you from? Hundreds of niggas is waiting for your motherfucking call, and they all talking shit about you right now. Call the coach at 530-494-9636. We waiting on your bitch ass. Hey, man, shout out to Odie Lope TV. Salute, brother. I say y'all please subscribe to Odie Lope, man. That's a good brother, man. He make good content. Uh, I don't know if he be getting threats like me, but shout out to Odie Lope TV. Uh, shout out to Marcus King. Shout out to Sheila from Cali. Uh, shout out to Hood, Hood Sports and Boxing. You know, uh, <laughs> who's supposed to say bait and switch? <laughs> Bad shit. Hey, man, look here, man. Anyways, the phone call I received yesterday. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Carla, hold on. The phone call I received yesterday from Big Booty, from, from Big Booty Judy's third cousin on her sister's side, baby daddy's brother, who's kicking it with her auntie, a nephew, um, nephew, cousin's niece, 
you know, say that, hey, Benavidez don't stand a snowball chance in hell and getting the Canelo fight. Everybody is in on it. Samson Lewis, Al Heyman, Mauricio Suleiman, Team Benavidez, Canelo. Everybody know what's going on. Benavidez team know that they're not going to get the Canelo fight. They know that the powers that be, Mauricio Suleiman, is not going to force that fight to happen. None of the sanctioning bodies want to piss off Canelo because they're about to get the sanctioning fees from a Canelo getting um, sanctioning fees from a Canelo getting paid big purses. He is uh, the king of, the, of boxing in North America, not in the UK, but in North America. He's the king of boxing. He does what he wants to do. And, and Mar uh, Mauricio Suleiman understands that. Um, Samson Lewis understand that. Team Benavidez understand that. This is why they say, well, Canelo has to be the one to choose us. And if he don't decide to want to fight you, right now you ain't going to fight him if you ever get him. But for everybody who I spoke to, but from the guy who called me, I'm going to find out. We're going to find out. That boy don't stand a snowball chance in hell and fight Canelo. David Benavidez may end up moving up to a higher weight division, which you probably should, you know, because you know, you know, this this what I'm here now. I want to see. I want to see. My, it's going. It's going to tell me a lot. We're going to see what exact, exactly what happened. But if, but um, if Big Booty Judy's cousin nephew on her sister's side, which is my source, is correct, we'll find out. Um, call her. What's your name? Where you calling from? Leo A Town. A Town. Uh, Leo from A Town. I, talk to me. I told you, Coach. <laughs> I told you, Plucky Duck. David Benavidez, plucky duck, ain't pushing the issue. If he really want to, he's going to force it, and you're going to buck the system, and F playing a role, you be your own man, you stand up on your own two feet, you say, hey, fuck that, I want this fight, I don't care what nobody says. You go every day on the media, you, you go to the YouTube guys, you go to every YouTube channel, mm -hmm. you start pumping it if you really want it, coach. But he don't want it, he wants the money. And apparently, PBC is giving him good enough money for him to be happy. Yeah, everybody. I don't care what nobody says. Uh, 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 now, the, the, this is the thing, David Benavidez. I, I don't. I don't think you understand what's going on. David Benavidez can't even. He can't press the WBC to 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 uh, press a uh, uh, Canelo fight because uh, Mauricio Suleiman is making sure that doesn't happen. What he said, according to what Michael Benson is saying. You know, the mandatory has to be, um, won't be clarified. This is the language they're using. Yeah, he's the mandatory, but I reaffirm that he's the mandatory. Check this out. He, I reaffirm that he's the mandatory challenger, but that won't happen until March of 2024. So I'm reaffirming that, but I won't clarify it until March. But even if I do clarify it, we don't know when Mauricio Suleiman is going to order the fight. So there you go right well, there. So, so we, we, David Benavidez understands clearly his position in the pecking order. I can't even press the WBC even if I wanted to because they're not allowing that to happen. That's what's going on. That's part of it. Well, well we do know that they got to December. In December, he has to fight David, fight, fight David or drop the belt. How do, how do we know that? You said we do know. How, well, where do you, you get that from? What wasn't that the the deadline the WBC put up man. for December? <laughs> man, <laughs> man. Hey, hey, listen, Leo, man, I, I can't oh. I can't keep track of it, dog. Mauricio Suleiman deadline smell line don't mean a goddamn thing. Last yeah. year, Benavidez yeah. was the mandatory when he beat dog on Caleb Plant. That's what the news was. That's what Mauricio Suleiman said oh. live on on the interview. Now we hear something totally different. So, I, man, come on, man, we can't we can't. Go, go, go. What you're telling me is today. Us, the boxing community is bending the knee to King Canelo. Yeah, he yeah. runs boxing. No, no, yeah, yeah, no. Absolutely, that's exactly what's going on. Well, I, 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 Samson Lewis, Al Heyman, Mauricio Suleiman, everybody know what's going on. Team Benavidez know what's going on. Canelo know what's going on. He's the most powerful guy in boxing. He's going to do whatever the hell he wants to do. None of the sanctioned bodies are going to strip him or do anything. That's the reality of the situation. That's what it is. And 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 and, and according to what. Um, uh, Michael Benson saying that um, that Mauricio Suleiman said he said Canelo will be free to face another opponent in May, and um, he said Suleiman has not clarified when he will order the David Benavidez and Canelo fight if he decides to order it. So it's still contingent upon the discretion of Mauricio Suleiman. So all I can guarantee is that we're going to get about four calls from D Block today telling us how Canelo runs box. Right, well, it, it is what it is, but I just want to throw that out there. Well, <laughs> shout out to Leo from H Town, salute, fam. Yeah, man, I mean that—that's that, what's going on. And what I want to—what I want to let Team Benavidez 
What I want to let Team Benavidez, if you Team Benavidez in the chat, what I want to let y'all know is this here. Team Benavidez and them know what's going on. Um, shout out to um, shout out to Big Tony for dropping that two dollar super chat. He say so. All this makes Team Benavidez what exactly? I mean, you know what? That's yeah, Big Tony. That's a good question. What does that make Team Benavidez what exactly? I can't say that Benavidez is ducking because they know that they can't get. There's nothing. Put it this way, Tony. They are powerless in this situation. What can you do when you have a promoter that's down with it? The uh, Al Heyman, the advisor that's down with it. The say anybody is down with it. Look, man, right now we're going to let Canelo do what he want to do. We ain't going to order nothing. We ain't going to press nothing. The man, don't, the only way you're going to fight him, he has to choose you. And if he don't choose you, then you ain't going to get the fight right now. So just be patient. We got some more fights lined up for you. That's what's going on. This is probably why David Benavidez uh, re-signed with P PBC, signed the three-fight deal, and, and, and the fight was not including Canelo. He knew he wasn't going to get Canelo. They probably sat him down and told him, look, man. Canelo over here now. And Al Heyman. Yes, Al Heyman. The almighty Al Heyman is going along with it as well. Look, man, Canelo with us now. You know, he with Death Row Records. He, he Tupac. Y'all got to fall in line right now. This is what's going on. Look, you ain't going to get the fight, but don't worry about it. I got some kibbles and bits over here to you to the right. I got, I got some sausages over here to the left. Don't worry about it. Now, that's if... Big Booty Judy, cousin, nephew, man, man on the sister side, hanging out with hanging out with cousin Tyrone and Chico Stick. If those sources are correct that I have, then he ain't got to worry about seeing Canelo in 2024. True, true, true. Shout out to Alan Powell. Hey, okay. For dropping that quarter of a bam dub on your boy. Hey, Leroy. Super Jack received. Playtime's over. Yeah, yeah, boy, yeah, yeah. Boy. Yeah, Alan Powell say so basically. And sadly, it's Canelo's world. We just living in it. It is what it is his way or no way. That, that I mean, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty much it, fam. That's pretty much it. It's Canelo's way or no way. He's the cash cow in the face of boxing and, and, and over here in North America. That's not a fighter in America that make more money than Canelo. This man got corporate sponsorships, uh, corporate commercial endorsements. He's on the cover of fours. Al Heyman. I, I hate I hate to I hate to say this to you Wakandas out there, um, you know pro PBC guys from the Alphabet Boy community. Al Heyman is Team Canelo. He's riding with Canelo against his career PBC fighter David Benavidez. That's the reality of the situation. I, I know I, the vibranium is going to, to Canelo now. You get what I'm saying? I just want to throw that out there now. Uh, Samson Lewis, same thing. Cause I'm like, when why did why did he never like press and do this? Why you don't see them taking doing paperwork? Like, call it, hold on. Like Jerome Boost in his filed paperwork to get the IBF belt. He waited till Crawford wanted to do it, but when when Smith had it, he was fine. So so, but that's neither here nor there. Um, you seen you got several examples. Dillian White eventually end up suing the WBC. Took him, it took him a thousand years, but he ended up suing him and whatever the case may be like, this is what's going on, man. The WBC, um, Canelo, Canelo was a powerful individual in the sport of boxing, bro. Everybody falling in line. Al Heyman falling in line too. Are you, you think he not? Uh, shout out to Odie Low TV. Hey, okay. Dropping that quarter of a, bam, dub on your boy. Hey, Leroy. Super Jack received. Playtime's over, boy. Boy. Only Lo say keep bringing that heat, that fire content, code. Hey, Only Lo, I appreciate you, fam. I really appreciate you, brother. I'm just, listen, bro. I'm just calling the spade a spade. Down from the bar, there's a platform stage. People pimping, sharp as razor blades. Caller, what's your name? When you calling from? It's Kermit from DC, coach. Kermit from DC, talk to me, fam. Hey, Coach, you know you know for a fact, we heard uh, Sullivan say <laughs> when he was dealing with uh, Charlo and his two-year absence, we, we had to change the rules. <laughs> and and that's what they do. They change the rules, man. <laughs> he said we had to change the rules. <laughs> and we know, Coach, and you know this, the, big, the guys with the cigars in the back room, they back there saying who's going to win, who's going to lose. Yeah. Make sure this guy wins so we can get a payday. Anytime uh, Rolly Romero beat that fight that day, and he lost for tw 10 rounds, mm -hmm. and he won the – they gave him the fight, man. You know it was an agenda already set. And it's, it's, it's like that in boxing all the way around, man. You can't, you can't go by who, who's, 
record is who deserves this and who's that. They call the shots, man, always. Yeah. Always, Kermit, 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 that's the Kermit, that's the reality of the situation. This is why I say this shit WWE has been scripted already. You know, um, it, it's already laid out. You know, when you someone that's powerful like Canelo, it's already laid out for you who you're gonna fight. He know who he's gonna fight next. He already know that. I mean, you know, he know um, when Floyd Mayweather was boxing, it was the same thing. Um, the only thing is, you could say with well, Floyd, Floyd fought. You know, some people say Floyd ducked some, some, a couple people, but he didn't duck anybody, right? Um, Oscar De La Hoya. I, I, ain't, I ain't got nothing bad to say about Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya fought every goddamn body. He fought people he did not have right. to fight. He, cause, but he, Oscar De La Hoya was in a position to where he didn't have to fight Sugar Shane Mosley. He didn't have to fight Manny Pacquiao. He didn't have to fight Bernard Hopkins. He didn't have to fight Tito Trinidad if he didn't want to. There were fighters that he got on his record, or, 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 or Floyd Mayweather or any of these other guys. There was fighters that he, could because he was the golden boy, he didn't have to fight those guys, but Oscar De La Hoya had a different mentality. He challenged himself to fight these fight these top guys, high risk fights. He did that. Um, so, um, um, uh, but coach, uh, that's the thing today, coach. They don't take the risk no more. There's no risk. They don't risk the. There's no risk no more. It's all scripted, like you say. Ain't nobody risking nothing. When it's scripted, well, you know, well, thanks, you know, coach. All right, well, shout out to Kermit from our DC. Salute to you, bro. Thank you, brother. Well, you know, um, Canelo don't have. Now, 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 I'm gonna be honest. Canelo don't have 64 fights, so he don't fault some guys, bro. He don't fault Floyd. Like Canelo got some names on his resume. It's not like he's ducking. You know, it's not like he's ducking a whole. Like you could say, well, he don't duck 20 motherfuckers. No, nah, he fought all. Of, he fought the Lars, the Trouts. He, well, he just fought Jamel Charlo. <laughs> Jamel Charlo. Um, you know, he's fought. He's fought a lot of guys. He has fought a lot of guys. So you know, it, it's it's hard for me. You know, uh, to say that. You know, um. Uh, you know, now, now people, now people are saying, look, man, the man ducking, the man ducking, um, he ducking the Mexican monster. You get what I'm saying and all this stuff there. What I'm telling you guys, I'll uh, call it, hold on. What I'm telling you guys is this. Everybody's on the same team. There's an understanding that that's, that's known that, hey, look, Canelo's going to do what the fuck he wants to do. He is the face of boxing over here in North America. He's the cash cow. We cannot afford to accept him. He is what's good for business. Him being the champion, and he, he, that's, that's what's good for business. We are not going to put him in any situation that's going to upset that apple cart. Do you get what I'm saying? So that's what's going on. Better be there's new from, from day one. He's not going to get the fight. Samson Lewis knew this. All of them are in this. What I'm trying to tell y'all, dog, all of them in it together, dog. That's what I'm trying. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all, dog. Sam T better be there is in on it too. That's what I'm saying. True, true, true. T better be there is in on it too. That's what I'm saying, dog. That, that's all I'm saying. Um, uh, Carla, what's your name when you call it from? What up, coach? It's Drew. Uh, I'm here in L.A., baby. Uh, Drew from L.A., talk to me, fam. Man, Coach, like I told you, Coach, they all in on it, baby. It's what's, it's what's good for business, baby. Mm. Like I said before, currency over legacy, right, Coach? It's currency over legacy, right, Coach? Yeah, man. I mean, pretty much. That, that, that's what Floyd's saying. And, uh, you know, and that, that's what's, you know, it is what it is. I get it. Because they're letting, know, they're letting them know, Coach, David got up next. Like, let Canelo do what he do. When mm. it's time to pass you the torch, you'll get it passed. So just wait your turn. Go fight all these other killers like every other cash cow did before he came to cash cow. Right, coach? They act like Floyd didn't fight killers. They act like Canelo didn't fight killers coming up before he became the cash cow. This is just the way it goes, baby. And, you know, I just want to give a shout out to our boy, Two Tone of Superstar. That's the Chilla Killers, baby. David, no, he ain't getting that fight. Go beat David Morell up. <laughs> so you can't say, coach, we can't say, we can't say David is being ducked when they signed up to be a part of this fiasco. That's the killer killers, baby. Yeah, yeah. Am I wrong or right, Coach? No, no, that, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, the, what I'm saying, what, 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 what I'm saying, guys, is, yeah, like, they, they down with it. Like, they signed Samson Lewis. Like, listen, I don't, don't think for one fucking minute that David, ben, that, that um, Jose Benavidez Sr. and Samson Lewis and Al Heyman don't know what's going on. Don't, I don't want nobody in this chat thinking, no, man, you know, they, they no, man, she, they, the, the Samson Lewis, they, they trying to make the fight, man, and Canelo doing this and doing that, and they pressing the WBC, they not even pressing the WBC. They could everybody. They, bro, they not coach. I, I wouldn't have bet. I wouldn't have bet. They don't had a meeting. I wouldn't have bet. Al doggone. Uh, well, Al probably was, they had. A meeting what, uh, like coach, phone. coach. What do you think? What do you think? Al Heyman called them up real quick. Like, listen here, baby boy. You got to stop talking about Canelo, baby. I'm trying to close this three five deal. So shut your mouth. 
you don't get your money. And then remember, Coach, they was talking all that shit, and then they got quiet all of a sudden. And didn't yeah. David's dad said, we signed a three-fight deal with these three fighters. They already had a fighter's contract set up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's just, it's just I'm laughing at it, Coach, because people really believe that nobody's ducking, bro. It's yeah. what's best for business. They want to keep Canelo happy because they want him to get that Saudi money so they can get their licensing fees off that big payday. They're yeah. not stupid. They're vultures. Yeah, They're yeah. all vultures. they all... Go ahead, Coach. No, no, I was saying, yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a case of anybody ducking anybody. And I, I, I do get, I do get if Canelo... Uh, people who people who are critics of Canelo, they feel that way. You have a right to feel that way because if it was any other fighter, we'll be saying that for any other fighter. But because it's Canelo, he's going to get special treatment, special privileges because of, because of his position on the chessboard. And that just and that just I'm just being honest, guys. That's just what's going on, fam. And um, the like, look at them coach, know, like I got. Uh, but go ahead, Drew. I'll let you wrap it up. Yeah, they they know what time it is. So look at Jamal Charlo had the belt for three years, didn't defend it. This is how you know he doesn't want to press the WBC. Mm. Remember, Coach, when Gillian White was the mandatory for the yeah, WBC yeah, for over yeah. two and a half years? Yeah. He had to press by getting a loss. The only reason he got his shot because they were going to lose a lawsuit that he filed. So they had to give him the shot. Mm. The Benavidez ain't going that far. They're not They're not doing that. Yeah. So, like, they know what time it is. They know they're going to get their shot. But, you know, Coach, I'm tired of you antagonizing them shooters, Coach. I see you got that Twitter. fully automatic Nerf gun. <laughs> yeah, you got that fully automatic drum <laughs> Nerf gun, Coach. I see what you're doing. You ready for them to pull up the magazine, the extended clip, Coach? You got to let them breathe, Coach. And I, that was some gourmet cereal that you made, Coach. That was from scratch. Yeah, Not man, scratch. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Shout out to Drew, All right, man. So, Coach, you have a great day. Hey. Yeah, I've been, yeah, you know, I've been trolling. I mean, you guys know, you guys know I've been trolling these dudes. I've been tro I've been trolling, I've been trolling my haters on social media. I've been terrorizing them on Boston Twitter. Boston Twitter hates me. Like there's a wanted poster. If you anybody that's on Twitter, there's a wanted poster on me on Boston Twitter. They be having groups, like they be having uh, Twitter spaces about me talking in groups. Like they just be fuck Coach Malachi, I can't stand that nigga. He cut coochies off this and that bitch that nigga. When I see him, I'm gonna do A, B, C, and D, this and that. They don't ever call the show. But you know, but you get what I'm saying. So this is what's going on. So I've been, I've been trolling them terrorizing them you know what i mean and having fun with it you know what i mean because that, that's what i do um call hold on that's what i do when um you know it is what it know the shea butters the shea butters you know you know you know how i, how I get down with the shea butter. i don't i you know i don't care you know i you know what it is i don't want to leave the names out when i went at booger ray on twitter too booger ray and replied back he ain't smart he ain't take the bait he know not to take that bait boy because i will roast his ass from here to oblivion um call him, what's your name when you call it from jamie from new york Jamie from New York, talk to me. Cole, let me ask you real quick. When it comes to Canelo and Benavides, how many times Sullivan is going to change the rules? You feel me? Man. I mean, you, you see you see what it is, man. Let I me mean. tell you. Uh-huh. No, oh, it's clear now. It's clear. Coach, listen. For the people that don't believe, it's clear now that Canelo runs Boston. Mm. No doubt about it. He is a powerful man in this sport. Yeah, he 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 do. Eh? So, There's no doubt about that, boy. Canelo. Yeah, yeah, no question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. that he that guy. He's a man. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, he's that guy. You're not lying, bro. And another thing, the Benavides, they're definitely down with the plan. You know, if they really wanted to fight, they would be, you know, at least try to press Suleiman to force the mandatory. They're not doing that, coach. So they're down with the plan. So, hey, man, that's on them. That's my call, Coach. Keep doing your thing. All right, man. Peace. Salute, fam. Yeah, phone lines over, man. 530-494-9636. Hey, look. Hey, check this out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Call hold on. I received a call today. I can't say. I can't say. I ain't going to. Again, I ain't going to. I, I don't want to throw. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. But, I, I, you know, say something about these phone calls I be receiving. Shout out to Miss Parker. What's going on, sis? Shout out to Miss Parker. Um, Isa, Isa Bermudez. Crack Stream TV. Can't forget about my main man, SP Got Beats. SP Got Beats, where you at, fam? Shout out to SP Got Beats. Shout out to, um, in my opinion, man, for becoming a member. Salute to you, fam. Again, you know, I'm receiving these calls. Just these strange calls I be receiving. And I received a call that said that, they listen, man, they want me to stall out. They want me to stall them out. Hey, yo, Slim, stall them boys out, man. Stall them boys out. Stall them kind of niggas out. Stall the doggone alphabet boys out. Stall them out, Slim. Stall, stall them. They want me to stall them out. And I'm like, dude, listen. At the beginning of the year, what did I say, guys? I say when 2024 hit, 
I'm going to leave them dudes alone. Didn't I say that? I said, I'm going to leave them dudes alone. I'm going to turn the other cheek. I said that. As soon as I did that, they went back to attacking me again. They thought because I turned the other cheek that that, that means it was open season on me. They went to making videos about me, this and that. So I say, no, okay. So that's how they want to play it. Let's take it to another level. I'm just getting started. Yeah, man, see what we got to do, man. We can't be, no, no, damn that. They started it. I'm a motherfucking finish it. Because I, I because I said I was going to stall them out, and I stalled them out. I was them hearing all kind of sneak this and this and that. And I, I wasn't listening, but people were sending stuff to me. I said, okay, I ain't going to say nothing. But now it's, now it's, it's all out war, right? It's all out war right now. Ain't no peace. <laughs> ain't no peace right now. It's all out war. Ain't, ain't no goddamn peace. All the Shea Butters, Boston Twitter, whatever. I want all that. Bring it on over here. Uh, call it. What's your name? What you call it from? Martin from Oakland. Martin from Oakland. Talk to me. Yeah, Coach. I just find it comical, all this outrage over, you know, what Canelo's doing with a guy that's never sold more than 60,000 pay-per-view buys. Mm -hmm. If one tenth of these con your phone going in and out. I can't hear you. Man, shit, I'm on the freeway, coach. All right, go uh, ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, now nah, like I was saying, if one, you know, one tenth of these Canelo haters were actual Benavidez fans, mm. he'd be pulling in some pretty decent numbers. But you know, it's just one more excuse to hate on this fool. You know what I mean? At the end of the day. They could really care less about 168. They could really care less about Benavides. It's just about piling on on this one. Do I agree with the whole situation? Of course not. I think it's bullshit. Mm. But motherfuckers are going to do what they're going to do. You feel me? I grew up, you know, I grew up on the street hustling like you did, coach. Mm. You know, I didn't pocket watch the next man. I didn't sit there whining and cry. If anything, I took some penitentiary chances. I took them trips. You feel me? to get a better number and if that's what Benavidez needs to do and move on and, and you know to greener pasture that's what he needs to do I saw Samson Lipowitz on Provox in Spanish and he was talking about their offering um, Jaime Munguia 50-50 split to fight mm -hmm. and according to him the contract he signed with PBC there's no conflict of interest as far as him going you know partnering up with another network or fighting somebody you know, outside of the PBC. So hopefully he's a man of his word. He did do some sucker shit in that interview where he basically said, I'm not going to, you know, invoke the mandatory clause because I've known, you know, Mauricio Suleiman since he was eight years old and some other bullshit he was saying. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Benavidez in a fucked up situation. He better off just doing what's best for him. If he can make that, 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 um, that Munguia fight, that'd be the way to go. You feel me? You, you know what? He probably, you know what? Um, but this is what I'm thinking, right? Because Benavidez, Lou, he, he, he drops a lot of weight to make 168. I'm hearing he balloons all the way up to 200 pounds, of, of not more, 200 or more, right? So he's losing anywhere from 35 to 40 pounds just to make 168. Um. It, it, shit, you know, it may come. It, it, it may come a point to where he just gonna have to move up to one seventy five. Like he should have just went ahead and just moved up at this point. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I'm what no, I'm, most definitely. What I'm telling you, Martin, is this: Samson Lewis, who is David Benavidez's promoter, they are they know what's going on. He, nope. There's a reason why, no, I don't want to press the WBC. I think Mauricio would do the right thing. We're just going to sit back and wait because there's an arrangement. This is what I'm telling everybody. There's an arrangement already set in place. We're not going to put force, David, force this David Benavidez Canelo fight. Canelo is not anxious yeah. to fight the guy. I'm being honest with you. Because he can easily say, you know what, I'm going to just fight this dude and get it over with. But he, that's not a part exactly. of Canelo's plan. He has, you know, yeah. he, he's going to get his $35 million guarantee regardless of who he fights. He can fight me, he's going to get his $35 million guarantee. So they're going to let him do whatever he wants to do. And then once he finish, then... We'll see what happens next year in 2025 or whatever. But Samson Lewis know what's going on. Team Benavidez know what's going on. Team Canelo, Al Hayman, yeah. all of them know what's going on, fam. This is what I'm saying. That, that's all I'm saying, bro. I'm not saying either one of them. No, most definitely. That, that's what's going on. So. I agree 100%, Coach. All right, salute, man. Shout out to Mark from Oakland. Salute. Old time in the building. 
Yeah, this 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 is what's going on. Like like I get what people saying. Yeah, man, but why he won't? Why he won't? Uh, why he won't? Dog on. At, you know, uh, press up and and activate the mandatory stuff like that. He can, he can't listen. Check this out. Y'all y'all look at this. Y'all look at this again. Look at this again. Y'all look at this. <laughs> this shit is hilarious. Um, yeah yeah. This this is hilarious. This is hilarious. Yeah, yeah this this is hilarious. This 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 is hilarious. I I, I can't even I can I can't even front. Like this is this, this this is funny. Oh, this funny funny. <laughs> oh, you got joke jokes. Um, Carla, hold on. So again, I have an article with Mauricio Suleiman. Hold on now. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna tell y'all the type of word salad they do with the language. I have an article where Mauricio Suleiman said the winner of Caleb Plant and Dog on David Benavidez will be the mandatory to fight Canelo Alvarez next. He said next. Now a year later, we're hearing something totally different. David Benavidez, and I want to let y'all this according to what Michael Benson said that um uh, Mauricio Suleiman said. David Benavidez will officially be set as uh as uh Canelo Alvarez mandatory challenger in March. So he he so he, in March he will officially see it was never official. Did you hear the word salad? It was never official, even though he said last year he would become the mandatory, but now this year he's saying, you know, it will become official in March of this year. <laughs> Suleiman has not clarified when the fight will be ordered. You want to know why he ain't clarified when the fight will be ordered? Because he don't want to be he don't want no he don't want to do an interview where people throw his words back at him wait a minute you said right here that the fight gonna be ordered this day well you know i don't want to clarify anything let's just wait and see and then let's move on how do, how do i know i'm right check this out but he said um he did not clarify when the fight would be ordered but indicated canelo will be free to face another opponent opposite of david benavidez in may everybody's in on it there's nothing to be mad about Team Benavidez, Mauricio Suleiman, WBC, PBC, uh, uh, everybody's in on it. Call it, what's your name? Where you call it from? I'm biased, Bram, New Haven, Connecticut. Good afternoon, coach. Yeah, man, how you doing, man? I'm biased, man. Talk to me, fam. Man, you got to love all this cap from top to bottom, from promoter to manager to fighter, <laughs> right? You got to love it, but the smoke and mirrors is part of the boxing game. You would agree, right? Yes, sir. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. And then we sitting here looking like, you know, the rumors are, you know, Shakur and Canelo's 35 million if they don't. There's no way I think they're going to fumble that bag. If they do, whoa, it's a wrap. But, you know, are you ready to enjoy this Canelo versus uh, Maul Charlo fight? Are you ready to enjoy that fight? <laughs> yeah, I'll I, I, I get to the Super Chats. Yeah, um, <laughs> hey, you know what? I don't know who he going to fight, man. But, you know, Canelo. Man, he fight Maul, bro. He fight Maul. You know what I'm going to do when that fight when that, when that fight announces, when that fight comes up? You know what I'm going to do? What? I'm gonna probably get on somebody's. Uh, I'll probably you know support a couple of the channels when they do their live. What's the name, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna listen to the fight by listen to the fight, <laughs> listening to them, and then I'm gonna go to YouTube and I'm gonna look at the highlights. That's gonna be my boxing experience for hey, Canelo Charlo fight. Listen, man, listen, brother, brother. I see. I think you're looking at this all wrong, my brother. See, uh, <laughs> see, 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 brother. Jamal, Jamal the Hitman Charlo. Can't forget about the Hitman now, because you ain't say that. Jamal the Hitman Charlo is a slick black fighter. He would be the one that would avenge the Charlo name. His little brother, the younger twin, by, by one minute, did not uh, perform to the best of his capabilities that night against Canelo. But I think that was the that that was the play in order to build up the upcoming fight between Saul Canelo Alvarez and Jamal the Hitman Charlo. They want to build that up so people can get excited about the revenge. Charlo would seek revenge for the whooping that his brother Man. took against Canelo on May the fifth on on on, 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 on single de Mayo weekend, my brother. I think you're looking at it all wrong. Can I tell you something? The way you just painted that picture, man, they need to go take those words and, and, and type them down so they can put them on the press release. But guess what? When Canelo fight, he can fight a ham sandwich and do 450K, right? He do a, he fight a ham sandwich, he'll do 450K. So since he's fighting Charlo, he's fighting a ham sandwich with a small bag of chips. It'll do 500K because well, I'm not that excited. No, thank you. <laughs> <sighs> He's fighting a ham sandwich with chips, bro. <laughs> I, 
right, L.A. Plain Lane. All right, man. Shout out to man. Shout out to my brother, 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 man. man. I'm telling y'all, listen, I can't tell y'all what y'all want to hear, man. Now, listen, I, again, again, my my source told me. My source. Now, I'm going to tell y'all who my source is. Shout out to Drew for dropping that $2 super chat. He said, but I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. Yes, sir. Uh, shout out to Drew again. He said, like I said before, it's currency over legacy. And shout out to Mark. Hey, okay. For dropping that quarter of a bam dub on your boy. Hey, Leo. Got another call called in. Super chat received. Playtime's over, boy. Boy. Hold on, Carla, Carla, hold on. He said, I appreciate and really enjoy the watch along for Foster Nova card. Yeah, man, salute fam. He said, looking forward to the next one. Yeah, man, we gonna be going, we gonna be going live. Anytime we got a fight, Mark, man, we gonna be going live, man. It just, I was on the road for the past couple of weeks, but you know how. Down from the bar, there's a platform stage. People pimping, pimping, sharp as razor blades. See, for me, it's kind of hard for me to say that, well, this guy ducking this guy. Like, bro, like, just imagine, bro, you being so powerful that you can, you can move your pinky finger. You can move your pinky finger. Hey, what's, what's wrong? Hey, man, my name's Saul Canelo. I, I move my pinky finger. And you got Al Heyman, Samson Lewis, Mauricio Suleiman all bowing down to your will. That's power. Carla, what's your name? Where you call it from? What's up, Coach? This is Coach Eddie from the ATL. What's happening, brother? Man, Coach Eddie from the ATL, man. Talk to me, my brother. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I've been I've been plotting this thing out for a couple of years, man. I got a whole wall in my house dedicated to Canelo Alvarez. Mm. And I got his face on my wall, and I got yarn and thumbtack plotting his every move and every scheme. You know, he's, Canelo is diabolical, you know what I'm saying? It's bigger than just boxing with him. You know, the FBI and the, they all involved with this because Canelo, if you remember, the, when following the timeline, Coach, mm -hmm. you remember when Canelo Alvarez's brother got kidnapped by the Mexican cartel. I remember that. Right before one his fight. Okay. So in order for him to get his brother back, Canelo had to go along with the Mexican cartel. Now you see Canelo's kind of moving like Scarface now. You know, he's a big time, a <laughs> lot of money, he's a billionaire. You know, say, hey, hey, who put this together? Me. You know, that's Canelo now. He's Scarface now. Man. You know, and they had a whole plot and scheme to get him. That way the Mexican cartel can funnel crack and fentanyl into the black community through this thing in boxing. That's how they do it, Coach. I don't, I don't plot it all out, Coach. That's what they do, even with the Mexican monster. When he lost his belt on the scale, he actually got kidnapped by the Mexican, by, by the Mexican cartel, and they fed him all night long. That way when he, he wouldn't miss weight, mm -hmm. even when he failed the cocaine test. They doped him up. They, it was all the plot for Canelo to get these belts. And that way they could travel fit and all, spread it all out through the black community. And that way they can come over and take over boxing. And now Canelo's like a kingpin now. He's no longer, he's just a front. They're trafficking billions and billions of dollars through Canelo Alvarez's fight, so. And, and, that, and that's what is bigger than boxing, man. Canelo is, is, a, is a cartel right now, Cole. You can't touch him. He's untouchable. He's Mr. Untouchable. I mean, I mean, isn't he in the same situation that Floyd Mayweather was in when he when he was in his heyday, uh, when he became Money Mayweather? They're different. They're different. They're different. They're different. I'm just saying, like, we said, we said, nigga, Floyd, man, listen, listen, Floyd fought Conor McGregor, an MMA fighter who had a zero and zero record, made 200 million, 300 million, something like that. I don't know what he got to keep now. You know, what you make, what you keep, two different things. You know, uh, generated, whatever. And, you know, and they say, you know what? Yeah, man, Mauricio Suleiman say, we, no, we, 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 no it's, to the, it's to the best interest of the WBC that we allow this fight to happen. We're going to sanction this fight. And this will be a WBC sanctioned bout on, you know, on his record. And then, yeah, nigga, I'm 50 and oh. Yeah. Well, I think he was 49. I think it was 49 and you know. That was his 49th fight, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, nigga. Yeah. You know, and then I got, I got all these flow more. Yeah, man, he be Conor McGregor. I'm like, man, oh my God, I gotta hear this shit. Like, bro, it's a, you know, this what, but this is what's going on. The business of boxing is what's going on. It's 95% business, 5% boxing. Right, but on the thing, I, I'm, I'm gonna be quick. On the thing that's different about that, it was at least Floyd wasn't holding up the belt when he was doing that. That's yeah. only different. Yeah, Floyd. Canelo got these belts holding hostage. Floyd, Floyd ain't caring about no goddamn belt, man. He's about to pay. But that's the only difference is, is uh, he run around masquerading. Like like he the goddamn best super super middleweight mm -hmm. and he's not. 
you know, but that, that, that's my call, Coach. Man, shout out to Coach Eddie, man. ATL, stand up, man. Salute, fam. See, see, y'all see this here? Now, now, this is Forbes magazine. Y'all look at this here. This is Forbes magazine. This was 30 for 30, 2024. Saul Canelo Alvarez flexes his business muscle. I want y'all to focus on business muscle and flexes, right? The key words, flexes, business muscle. Y'all check this out. Now, according to Forbes, and this article was written December 7, 2023, they say this man has amassed a net worth of $275 million as one of the pound for pound best boxers in the world. The 33-year-old Mexican champion is once again punching above his weight as he builds an empire outside of the ring. Now, do you really think, do you really think that Mauricio Suleiman, Al, he got a net worth more than Al Heyman and all, and all the motherfuckers. That Mauricio Suleiman, Al Heyman, and Samson Lewis, do you really think that somebody that got a, that's a boxer that has a net worth, like all these dudes is supposed to be the face of boxing in America? Okay, I tell you what, what, what their net worth is? Do they have any corporate sponsorships? Are they in Forbes? Do you get what I'm saying? I'm saying, do they have any corporate sponsorships, though? This man got a net worth, according to Forbes, again, I, I, I don't know how much he got, but according to them, he got a net worth of $275 million. He got, he got two more fights with the PBC. I don't know how up to date that's, this information is. Now, according to these next two fights, he well, his next fight, he put he out the taxes, the next two fights out the taxes, whatever the case may be, more than likely he's gonna have a net worth of over $300 million. Do you think that they're gonna let somebody like a David Benavidez get in the way of something like that? They say this man building an empire. Come on, man. I'm telling y'all what's going on, dog. This is what's going on. Everybody's in on it. Everybody's in on it. That, that's why I ain't arguing about this shit. I'm calling, what's your name? What are you calling from? Jamal, Lincoln and Omaha. Jamal from Lincoln, Omaha. Talk to me. Coach, now you call that nigga the Charlo the hitman. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see the drunk hitman that let Caleb Plant slap him? Are we going to see the hitman from two or three years ago? Okay. He still ain't got his, his payback for uh, the white boy. This is a bad fight. Mm -hmm. This is a bad fight. Uh, you know, I, man, I don't know what's going on with boxing. I'll aim it. First, let me get praised. To, <laughs> let me get praised. To, <laughs> you can't talk bad about Al now. You can't talk bad about no. Al. Brother. <laughs> Listen, I, hey, I know the gig is running up. I know they don't got no annual budget. Uh, it, it's tough times over there. We still ain't got no Crawford fight. Man, yeah. they trying to ride the back to Canelo. Uh, yeah, can you? Just what's going on with this, Coach? I've been out the loop, man. Uh, do they really think Charlo is going to put up a fight? No, no. I think Canelo is picking him. Um, it's an easier fight for Canelo. Jamal Charlo was mentally not there. He He's not active. No, this this guy has had one fight in two and a half years, and he hasn't defended his title in over two and a half years. So this is what's going on. That, 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 see, that, this is another thing. This is what I'm trying to say, Jamal. This is what they're doing, fam. Yeah. Is the WBC the mafia? <laughs> they don't enforce nothing. <laughs> they don't enforce nothing. I mean, Charlo, I mean, man, this is going to be a bad fight, man. This is going to be worse than the plant fight. Uh, uh, you know, it seems like everyone's cashing out. The yeah. first Charlo cashed out. Yeah. Keith Thurman cashed out. Danny Garcia cashed out. Uh, Earl Spence cashed out. Uh, Deontay Wilder, uh, the next to cash out. Did you notice a pattern? All PBC niggas, all of them. Yeah, all of them. Yeah. Just thought I'd call in, Coach. Man, I appreciate it. Keep doing your thing, man. When you come to Omaha? Um, I'll probably be to Omaha in the next uh, month or so. I told Bud I'd be back. Um, when I saw him in Vegas, I said I'd be back soon. It's just that um, had to get a couple of things squared away. A lot, I got a lot of good things going on in my life right now, so I told him I'd be there because so yeah. we could we could play darts. You know, that motherfucker like to play darts. Yeah, so. yeah. He, man, he, he's competitive. When you come back, man, I'm going to buy some gear, man. I appreciate your show and keep doing your thing. All right, salute, fam. Look, look, look this, that, that's what's going on, bro. Like, listen. <laughs> what, 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 what I'm trying to say is this here. And a lot of, and I think everybody in the chat picking up what I'm putting down. Canelo was powerful. And 
promotional companies bow down to him. Al Heyman is not no different. Um, I somebody in the chat said that no, Al Heyman is pick Canelo, pick ben, pick Charlo for Canelo. Well, Al Heyman can't make Canelo do what he don't want to do. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter who Canelo, who Al Heyman chooses. Al Heyman could have chose David Benavidez. That doesn't mean that Canelo um, is going to take it. Canelo can say, no, I don't want him. Who else you got? Well, I got Jamal Tolo. Yeah, I'll take him. Because no one can make Canelo do what he don't want to do. Same thing with Floyd was, well, y'all, hold on. See, this why, this is another thing. This is why I keep playing this. I'm going to tell, I'm going to let the family know something. I'm going to let the family know in the chat. Let the family, this is why I keep playing this. But when you, when, when you are put in a, a certain position, he should be, go, I mean, he's able to, like, like me. You know, when I was in a position, I can pick and choose who I wanted to. Because I, I, I earned that right. Um, yeah, sir. It, it's no problem. No, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a live, I'm doing a live show right now, man. Everybody excited about Abdullah Mason, his performance. You know, the, um, the young phenom is what I call him. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just doing a lot. I'm doing a lot right now. Okay. Okay. So yeah, man, I, I appreciate that, man. Um, I definitely want to get, get the young brother on, man. That, that brother, that man is, I was talking to Carl Moretti, man. Everybody's so impressed with dog on Abdullah. You know, and, uh, you did a good job. You did a really good job, man, with, with your boys, man. I, I really appreciate what, what, what you, you what you done, brother. Oh, absolutely. I got you. Yes, sir. All right, I understand. So what I do when I um just when I get off the live, I I, I let you know we'll set we'll set a date up and we we get Abdullah on and and, and, and yeah, yeah. Okay, yes, sir. All right, it was long. Um. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I was on the on the phone. Um, uh, I was on the phone with um. That was um Abdullah Mason's father. You know, me and him have a really really good relationship. So, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get I'm gonna get Abdullah Mason. I'm gonna get Abdullah Mason on the show. He will be on the show. Um. Anyways, he say uh shout out to uh shout out to Jamie from New York. Shout out to uh Dr. Paul. To this day. <laughs> hey, shout out to Dr. Paul. I'm just saying, like, bro. Don't everybody believe in Google? Go Google that shit. <laughs> I'm like, God damn. Hey, you know what? You know what? I'm, I'm sitting there right. I'm sitting there like, God damn, boy. Canelo, 33 years old. He going on 34. Nigga got a net worth of 275 mil? God damn. Bro, that's, bro, that's so much money, bro. I said, oh, now I see why he walking to the, he walking to the, uh, he walking to the way in with silk pajamas on. <laughs> Don't say goodbye. Ha, ha, Hey, look here! Walking, walking to the, walking to the, uh, the way in with Dose Gabbana pajam silk pajamas on. You know, you know, this is gonna be, you know, this is gonna be, you know, Canola, how you feel? Oh, you know, just gonna be another, another day at the park. You know, you know, another puto, another puto bites the dust. You know how I do it. You know what I mean? You know. <laughs> Hey, ah, damn, boy, bro. Listen, I remember, I remember how arrogant, I remember how arrogant Floyd was, right? Floyd, Floyd, Floyd. I remember, listen, man, listen, boy. Floyd, money, May was when he became money, May, boy, Lord have mercy, boy. I'm, I'm gonna tell you something else I don't like too. Hold on, I'm um, calling. Hold on, I'm gonna tell you something else I don't like too. Anytime somebody say something about Floyd on Twitter. Booger Ray Leonard feel the need to jump in and defend Floyd's honor. Do you notice that? I did a video interview with Bill Haney, and Bill Haney said that, hey, you know, remember the interview? He said, hey, man, you know, we know that Floyd Mayweather is working with Ryan Garcia, showing him, you know, I know how to how to beat the show the road. Booger Ray Leonard said that ain't true. He ain't working with him. Bullshit. Ryan Garcia said that Floyd is his advisor. Floyd is working with me. He said it himself. Booger Ray Leonard, now we didn't say nothing disparaging about Floyd or anything. Booger Ray came out of nowhere, want to respond to my video, 
because Floyd's name was in it. My nigga, like, why do you feel the need to def defend Floyd's honor every chance you get? You don't massage enough of his balls. You don't rub his nipples enough. You don't bitch your bottom lip long enough. You lowered the gaze. You looked at him with bedroom eyes long enough. You did everything you possibly could do with Floyd Mayweather. The man is fighting exhibitions. There's no need for you to get online and, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't like what you said about Floyd. And we didn't even say nothing bad about Floyd. Ran off on the floor twice. Nobody said Ain't nothing bad about Floyd. Booger Ray always got something to say. But this bum is taking the easy matches. Fighting other bums. That rhymes. Booger Ray always got something to say. Uh, I like that. Um, Carla, what's your name? What you call it from? Hey, it's Anthony, Texas. Anthony from Texas, talk to me. Yeah, man. I, it's been a weird, a weird time, man. Because I'm, I'm not a Canelo fan, right? I'm in a weird position because I was more of a Triple G kind of guy when when Canelo was waiting him out, doing the old stalling. <laughs> With the 155 bullshit, and I'm and I'm Hispanic, right? So I'm Mexican, so I'm going at I'm going at my own people's like hard, you know, like you guys can't fucking back this bullshit. But now I'm like defending the guy. I don't even like him, mm. you know. But what what it is is he's the last. If you think about it, he's the last HBO era star. He's gonna cut from the same cloth as Floyd, Oscar, Pacquiao, mm. Cotto. I mean, there's nobody else like that anymore, and that's that's the. Uh, the weird position boxing is in. And I hope he just retires already because since he's the last one, everybody's playing his, wait, playing his waiting game and we need to reset. Boxing is going to reset when he goes away. You know, even the, even the network, they're, you know, they're having, nobody knows who, where the footing is. Right now, it's looking like top rank is the most steady ship, you know, and the zone is, you know, they kind of fell off a little bit, but they're still there. You know, PBC, we don't know what's going on. So and no matter what this guy does, you know, he, he's ducking Benavidez. And then they're saying Crawford. The same people are saying um, Bud was, was ducking uh, Boots. You know, and then, uh, but then, the, then we got to come around and say, okay, well, why didn't Benavidez fight Morel? Weren't they in talks? But once mm. Canelo landed on that side of the street, they, they, they pulled out of that. So it's like, what is it, man? It, it, for every move, you're, you're ducking somebody, you know, and he, he's doing the Floyd Mayweather thing. And what, what y'all got to think about is every day, Benavidez, he's busting at the seams, right? It's got to be, you got to think about how it's like torture for him. He has to worry about everything he puts in his body, anything he eats or drinks, because that dude is big. Yeah. I mean, maybe he's, Canelo's just saying, hey, man, you know, the, you know he, the longer we wait, the more this dude has to starve. I mean, because that dude is starving literally every day. He has to look, he has to think about any kind of macro he puts in his body because he's, he's really should be at 175. But that, that's just yeah, my that, thing, that, man. Yeah, I yeah, just... that's a, yeah, David Benavidez is a big guy. And um, and um, my, my, th my thing is, this, this is my thing. I mean, this is just the business of boxing. This is how it works. When you have that type of money that Canelo had, that dude powerful, bro. So he's able to maneuver how he wants to maneuver. Floyd did the same shit. But what I will say is this here. When you look at Floyd... He fought, he got he got some hell of a names on his resume. Canelo got some hell of a names on his resume as, resume as well. It's not like he's Jaime Mugil, you know, for 43 wins, 75 knockouts, and you can only name one or two people he might have fought, even one person. It, it's not that. He has some hell of a names, Hall of Famers on his resume, and future Hall of Famers if they're not already. So, I mean, the guy has 64 fights. So I do, I do get it in one sense, what people are saying, you know, you know, he's a dog and this and that, yada, 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 yada. Okay, but you got to ask yourself, why David Benavidez is not pressing the WBC? Why he's like, no, I'm finna petition. I'm finna do this. I'm tired of this. Yada, yada. No, because all of them are in on it together. This is what I'm saying, fam. Samson Lewis is going along with, with the plan. It's Mauricio Suleiman, you know, Team Benavidez, Al Heyman, all of them are in cahoots. That's yeah, what I'm and saying, then the last brother. thing I want to say... Yeah. Yeah, and the last thing I wanted to say, we knew we know that Al takes care of his loyals. You know, he wanted this fight for Spence. Mm -hmm. That was the original plan was to hit for Spence to fight Canelo. Yeah. You know, they, they wanted that fight, but that, that fell apart. But he's taking care of Charlo. He's taking care of his 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 most loyal fighters. You know, even though we don't like the guys like Charlos, he's taking care of them because he, he has that loyalty thing with him. But the thing is we gotta remember we don't know where David Benavides sits with his good graces because if People don't realize that David Benavides tried to leave him for top rank. They tried to leave Sam, Sam Salinkowitz, but they went to court and they pulled him back. So is, is he really on Al Heyman's favorite list? He might not be. That, that's, that's, that's all I got to say. All right, man. Salute, fam. Shout out, shout out to Anthony, man. Texas, stand up. Texas, stand up, man. At least, hey, hey, at least, 
at least at least I went to that whole ass nigga from uh, from um uh, uh, eat money from Texas. <laughs> who who did it? Who did it? They eat money from Texas. What you gotta say? Nigga, you the cool. You set out, nigga. On crib, on crib. Drop the attic. Pull up. What's up? Listen, man. But anyway, back to what I was saying though, right? Anytime somebody say, it, bro, I don't. I never seen nothing like this before in my life. My nigga, I get it. You and Floyd made money together. You was the best spit bucket carrier in the game. You was the best nipple massager in the game. You was the best bottom lip biter in the game. You was the best I gaze my eyes and look at Floyd with bedroom eyes with such admiration in the game. He took you from the slums of DC and turned you into something. I get it, but dude, you're not the Floyd Mayweather police. And somebody said something about Floyd? You know, hold on now, hold on now, 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 now. Oh, what do you say about Floyd? Dude, you do know he ain't say nothing bad about Floyd. Yeah, but he meant the Floyd name, though. I gotta defend his honor. Make it last. Make it last forever. Don't let I love you. Ooh. Bro, I'm like, anytime, bro, if y'all nah, y'all ain't no Twitter, y'all go on Twitter. Hey, shout out to Jamie from New York. Go on Twitter, dog. Bro, let me tell you something. D d on Twitter, bro, it's some. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, bro. I just be sitting back watching. I be sitting back with my arms crossed watching, right? I said, right, hold on, hold on. Where the fire? Where the fire? Okay, where the pistol? Oh, I ain't, I ain't got my pistol on me, boy. They better be lucky I ain't got my pistol. But my Yosemite Sam, boy, I would get my Yosemite Sam on, boy. You know, shooting, rooting, tooting. But I would get my, boy, they better be lucky. But I would get my Yosemite Sam on, boy. Uh, I feel, I feel, I, I, I don't feel great right now. I ain't got my pistol on me. What, what, what my Nerf gun at? Anybody see my Nerf gun? Anybody see my Nerf gun over oh, the Shea Butters? The Shea Butters probably got, but anyway, boy, listen. Anytime you say anything about Floyd Mayweather, if you say, hey, man, you know, yeah, man, I like that limbo that Floyd had. Ah, wait a minute, how would you say something about Floyd? You don't know nothing about Floyd Mayweather's Lambo, buddy. It's not called a Lambo. It's called a Lamborghini, buddy. And I was with Floyd when he bought it. Do you know that? Do you do you know that? Uh-uh, call it, hold on. I was with Floyd when he bought it. Do you know that? And you know Booger Ray knows going to flaring up. He just snorted a half a key of cocaine, allegedly. Just snorted a half a brick allegedly uh sources say allegedly you know what i mean you, you wasn't there you don't know you don't know what type of horsepower is under that engine buddy do, do you know i'm like booger ray i'm not even talking my nigga you don't even defend yourself like 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 what have you accomplished outside of rubbing must giving floor massages in between rounds I carried the snake bucket. I was his security. I was his bodyguard. Yeah, yeah, nigga, whatever. You, 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 you owe a debt of gratitude to Bob Aaron right now. If it wasn't for Bob Aaron, goddamn, you'd be in, you'd be in the ditch in, 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 in the middle of the, in the middle of the desert in Vegas, some goddamn well. True, true, true. Anyways, I'm um, calling. What's your name? You calling from? Coach, what's going on? It's Rob from New York. Rob from New York. Talk to me, fam. Hey, Coach. Um, <clears throat> I think. Um, most of the calls, including you, have a really good point on this one. Mm -hmm. uh, like the last caller mentioned, you know, I, I you know, I'm, I'm a huge Canelo hater. I am rooting for Benavides to get that fight, but I don't think Samson is doing uh, Benavides any favors. Uh, going on Pro Box TV in Spanish and saying that uh, that they're not going to petition for for the fight. Mm -hmm. Uh, or for a vacant belt, because if, if you look, if you look at, I've been listening to a lot of uh, Mexican media, mm -hmm. sports media, they've been pushing on this, because you have to remember that Chavez originally is kind of like their idol. They've, they've been pretty harsh on Canelo, and they've kind of been saying what everybody's been saying, that he's been ducking and everything else. Uh, but for Samson to say, oh, you know, you know, we feel like Maurice is going to do the right thing. That's his BS. <laughs> uh, and that, 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 that could mean, I saw, I saw that the, I mean saw the interview. Things, I saw the interview, yeah. Yeah, that could mean two things. Either A, they, uh, they really want the fight and they don't want to get in the bad graces of, uh, they want to stay in the good graces of Canelo. And they don't want to just go ahead and force Canelo to vacate the belt. Then they don't get no fight at all because that that then they're screwed. And then you know they're 
essentially putting their their foot in their mouth because they originally said like, oh, we just wanted a belt. No, you wanted that paycheck with, with the glory that comes along with it. But, you know, they just have to sit down and play the game and hope that Canelo kind of chooses them at the end of the day. Uh, but my other thing that I wanted to mention is what's up with uh, your boy, Tim, Tim, Tim Bradley, saying that he has a sword, saying the Spence is going to be the third fight. <laughs> man, I, man, I don't, what's man, up I don't with know, that, man. Coach? Yeah, I, I didn't even hear that until you just said it. I didn't, know, I didn't know Tim said that, but I don't know, man. Yeah, I'm, 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 pro, I'm, I'm pro Box TV. He went and he said it. He's saying, like, hey, you know, like, uh, don't be surprised if Spence ends up being the third fight. And, and Paulie just went fucking crazy. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that, 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 that's, that's my call, coach. I mean, I, I'm rooting <laughs> for the fight. Betavinas probably has two to three more fights in, 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 um, in this weight class. Otherwise, he's going to be forced to move up. Uh, but lastly, I wanted to mention. With all those, all this debacle and all this major disorganization that's happening among the PVC, if if Benavides doesn't get Canelo as the next fight, who is he gonna fight? Because right now it looks like they they're running, they don't have much options. Like they're having like TV network issues right now, um, like this Amazon thing. I don't know how that's feeling, but I don't I don't even know if he may have an opponent otherwise than, than facing Morel because it, it looks kind of sus right now. Yeah, um, no, you know, dude, Benavidez has a three fight deal with the PBC. He's fought two already. So they'll find somebody for him. Um, he signed the deal. He's happy with the deal that he has with the PBC. That's what his father said on the boxing voice. So that told me everything I need to know. Benavidez signed, signed a three fight deal with the PBC, knowing he wasn't going to get the Canelo fight. And his father said, We are happy with the deal, meaning we're happy that we're not getting Canelo. So there's no big deal. But then, you know, then we'll go online where Canelo's ducking us. He don't want to fight us. But you re signed with the PBC for what? What was the. What, what, what was the purpose? Listen, if the end game was for you to get Canelo, what is the purpose of re-signing with the PBC when they don't even have Canelo in the fold for you to fight him? And then you say that we're happy, you know, with the deal. So that told me everything I needed to know. And then I hear what Samson Lewis is saying. Yeah, we're not going to petition the WBC. We're hoping Mauricio do the right thing. So that tells me everybody is in on it. That tells you the story. Yeah. They better be their team is in on it. That's what I'm saying, fam. Coach, anyway. last thing before I leave. What? Um, what is the purpose of these sanctioning bodies if they can't really force these people to, to make a fight? Because they, they were quick to um strip Josh Taylor off the belt. They were quick to, to strip um uh, Haney right away. They were quick to strip uh, Crawford. Is this this is this a money thing? I mean, like, if, yeah, yeah, if, yeah, if just, you're yeah, the money just, fighter, the purpose, the, purpose, the purpose of the sanction of bodies is to collect money from the biggest names in boxing, whatever moves the envelope. Uh, Devin Haney doesn't have the power, the marketability, or the money that Canelo has. So that's we we don't mind taking we don't mind taking this goddamn taking this goddamn belt. So the fighters who who are low on the totem pole, Josh Taylor's and stuff like that, that's not a draw like that, 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 that doesn't have the political power in the sport or the um the business act acumen that, that Canelo has outside of the ring and inside of the ring and the draw that Canelo is, then they get treated differently. So there's different rules for certain fighters depending on who the fighter is. Someone like uh, like Jamal Chalo. Jamal Chalo had the WBC belt. He won that. He had that belt since 1979. Coincidentally, he had the same belt that Canelo had that that Canelo was stripped of, and when he was elevated to the French fries belt. So he have Canelo old belt yeah. in the middleweight division. He didn't fight for it. He's the email champ. And guess what? He had it since 79, and he hasn't defended it. So, I mean, the sanction the bodies do what they want to do. That, that's, that's what it is. There's arrangements that's going on, bro. The sanction the bodies is just a joke. Like, why they there? They there to collect money. That's it. But shout out to Rob from New York. Salute, fam. Yeah, man. Do, 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 do you get what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? So, so it is what it is. It is what it is. I mean, that's just reality of the situation. I tell them time and time again what's going on. Who is this dude? The troll? He says some of your subscribers are about to unsubscribe, coach, with your statement. I mean, no, no, I mean, the ones who unsubscribe, let them unsubscribe. But no, the, the, the subscribers over here, no, I've been saying this all along.
Like my some the, 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 the subscribers that rock with me, they know this is what we be talking about. So I don't know, hold hand, you might be new to the channel, but you know, if you're new to the channel, you will know that this what this what I've been talking about. I like man Canelo, man, he you know this 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 is what's going on. Everybody and a lot of people in the chat know it. I mean, it is what it is. So you know, it is what it is. I mean, that, that just rattles to the situation. This shit WWE. I say that on this show all the time. Boston is WWE now. That's what it is. It's WWE, fam. The eyes see, the ears hear, but nothing never is what it appears to be. I don't call it what your name, where you call it from. Marco 714, Coach. What Marco up? 714, talk to me. Coach, you beat me to the punch. About 15, 20 minutes ago, mm -hmm. uh, there was another caller who was... Uh, uh, calling about Sulaiman saying that uh, Canelo will become officially uh, the challenger sometime in March. Well, let me tell you something, Coach. I wanted to listen to that interview again. It's only about, it, it's a 30-minute interview, but the real content was in the first 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, Coach, there's something suspect going on. Pro Box TV removed that interview with Sulaiman from their podcast. Uh -huh. Uh, removed it from their, you know how ProBox has two channels, the Spanish and the English one? Right. They removed it from the English one, so that interview with Sulaiman only remains on the Spanish uh, channel. And if my understanding is right, is Sulaiman says at the moment David Benavidez beats plant, they have a whole year to really get involved and really press the issue. That's why Sulaiman kind of washes his hands in the interview and says, well, it hasn't been a year since Benavides beat Caleb Plant. The year will be in March. So anything before March, the sanction and bodies have not uh, done anything wrong. But once March hits, then they're really going to start making it official to where like, okay, it's been a year. Now, yes, 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 I know. That's the narrative, Coach. That's an error, but I can find it a little suspect that they removed those interviews from the English uh, channel and they only left it in Spanish. And it sucks, Coach, because at the end of the day, Canelo's going to do what he wants. And, you know, it just makes the Benavides camp look bad because they were doing all this barking and yapping. And then next thing you know, they're okay with everything. So, I mean... Canelo is going to do what he wants, Coach. And as far as Benavidez making the 168, for a minute I thought he was going to leave the 168, Coach. But if you notice, in his last two or three fights, that man has been able to make 168, and he's actually under the weight, Coach. And apparently weight doesn't seem to be an issue for the last two fights. So uh, it remains to see if he goes to 175. I say he writes out the 168 and cleans it out. But there's definitely something suspect going on, Coach. And I'm going to keep an eye to see what Sulaiman does coming in March. Because his words were, until March hit, that will be one year, and then we can act up on it. So man. I'm kind of curious to see yeah, that man, that, whether that he man, that man so he does something man, about it. Yeah, uh, shout out to Marco 714. Salute to you, fam. Yeah, that man, that man no said, Mauricio Sulaiman no said 20 different things since then. So, hold on now, 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 wait a minute now, now, he did what he said right here, right here, he said in March, there to be a year, then we gonna, hold on, what he said, hold on, in March, what we gonna do now, we gonna certify, clarify that Benavidez is the mandatory, but what we not gonna do yet, we not gonna order it. So all this word salad, you know, uh, yeah, we gotta wait till March, but y'all didn't do that with Josh Saylor. Y'all didn't do that with Josh Saylor. Y'all didn't do that. There's a whole bunch of fighters y'all didn't do that too. What, why, why does, uh, call hold on. I'm just saying, so so if this is a rule that you have for all fighters, that that's what that tells me this is not a rule for all fighters. This is a rule specifically spe uh, specifically for Canelo. And I get it. I have listen, I don't have a problem with it. You wanna know why I don't have a problem with it? Cause I don't throw my hands or throw my hands up in the air with this shit anyway. I told you this shit is WWE. I'm not going to the wrestling match thinking that Jake Paul or Logan Paul is really doing a full-fledged pile driver on a guy with his neck is hitting the mat and he breaking his neck. I know what it is. I know what I'm looking at. I know Team Benavidez, Team Canelo, Team uh, 
uh, PBC, uh, Team WBC. I know all of them are in the same game, and there's an arrangement. Ben the Edge, you ain't going to get this fight, but we're going to sign the three-fight deal. We're going to pay you A, B, C, and D for these three fights. He was cool with it. Boom. Once he became cool with the arrangement, Ben Edge cannot come out and cry about, I can't get the Canelo fight. Canelo won't fight me. Because you as a cool with the arrangement. That's what I'm trying to say. Carla, what's your name when you call it from? What's up, Coach? It's inevitable. It's D Block, D Town, D City, D Zell, Baltimore. Man! D Block, talk to me. I love it, man. You know, you know, I love this. You know why I love this? Because the truth shall set you free. See, this is the thing. We already knew Benavides was a liar. We already knew Benavides missed weight. We know that Benavides has been used to doing cocaine. And cocaine's a hell of a drug. Man! C Coach, I love it because at the end of the day, Benavides ain't got no shot. He ain't got no shot. He knows that he ain't got no shot. He's a duck. He knows he's a duck. His own people know he's a duck. His daddy been talking all these shit off for of what? He's a duck. Coach, I've been saying this forever. I've been saying this for a minute. Canelo Alvarez is the man at 168. Benavidez ain't want no, none of that shit. What you got to say with that? Um, the, only, the only thing is, how is Benavidez a duck when you have a sanctioning body that's on record and it p appears that they are on the payroll or whatever of Saul Canelo Alvarez? You have a sanctioning body that's, that's bowing down and bending the knee to the fighter in question that Benavidez is supposed to be the mandatory to. So if you have an understanding before you step in the courtroom, look, if you go to trial, you're going to lose. Because, my, listen, because I got 12 people of the jury that's going to be of my family members. It's going to be 12 people. It's going to be three of my aunties. It's going to be four of my uncles. That's seven. It's going to be two of my nieces. And it's going to be three of my nephews. And I'm telling you, if you go in this courtroom and go to trial, no matter how much evidence you present, no matter what we may have, might have said in the past, we are going to find you guilty. Mm -hmm. So if you've been a beat ass and you're going into a situation where you know what the deal is, okay, what's the best option? The, this the next best option. Look here, boy. Sign this motherfucking contract right here. We got a three-fight deal for you. You're going to make you some change. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you two million guarantee. See, can you get some on the back end? You ain't going to get none on the back end because you, you don't sell no pay-per-views. But we're going to give you some money on the back yeah. end and you can have a coke and a smile. Shut the fuck up and have a nice day. True, true, yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right there with you, Coach. I'm going to end it like this. I'm right there with you. He needs to sit down and shut the fuck up. It's over. Sit your ass down in the kitty table because you don't belong in the big mass table. We know, and I'm going to just keep it like this. If it's Charlo, Houston got problems because cause Canelo's coming for Charlo. He's coming for that mouth that was talking five, seven years ago. Mm. And I'm ready for it, Coach. I'm ready for this fight. And let's get it on. Let's get it on. D block, D count, D C D D. Shout out D block. Hey, shout out, hey, shout out to Summer in November. Summer in November, what's going on, sis? I mean, that's just reality of the situation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's reality of the situation. So so that is what it is. I don't I don't even know how to like how to, okay, dude, like Benavidez is ducking. Canelo is ducking. Like, like these are the arguments that I'm hearing, right? But my thing is. There's an arrangement, dog. Like, there's an arrangement. Simple as that. That's why I showed you. I'm looking at this man. That man, $275 million? At 33 years old? I mean, there's no one in America that... Damn, bro, that's a lot of goddamn money, boy. Shit, boy. I'm like, you know, that's that that, that that's more than that that's that that's more than he could buy he could buy a whole lot of Nick Sacks with that. Let's see, I got two Nick Sacks in here right now. I got two Nick Sacks and I got three joints. Now, if I had 275 mil, you know how many Nick Sacks I can get? <laughs> <laughs> you know how I many? You know how I many Nick Shaq can get? Shout out to uh, Stephen X dropping that two dollar super chat. He said Canelo would drop the WBC belt if he's forced to fight. 
um, duck. I mean, yeah, I mean, no one, I mean, they're not, they're not going to force him. They're not going to force him, Canelo. They're not going to force Canelo to fight um, anybody. I, you know, you ain't got to worry about that. I need to talk to you right now about my royalties and how you keep your books. My office hours are from nine to five. Fuck your office hours. I need to talk to you right now, motherfucker. I'll call her. What's your name? Where you calling from? Coach Vanny, man. Casino Life Prayers from Atlanta. Man, Casino Life Prayers, man. Talk to me, fam. ATL, stand up. Man, bro. Fuck the bullshit, man. I understand everything. You know, I get it. He's a million dollar man. I get it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's, this is my guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? But, bro, you got to earn that shit, man. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It come a point where you got to earn that. Like, what are you getting paid for? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, all that money. You got all that money, but what the fuck? What, you know what I'm saying? Like, who are you, who you going? You know what I mean? Like, bro, come on, man. It's like, bro, this shit, bro, this shit is so disrespectful to the game. Like, it's like, it's the reason. It's, it's the reason niggas don't watch boxing. You know what I'm saying? It's the reason. Bro, this is why niggas don't watch boxing, bro. Like, on some real shit, bro, this is why niggas don't watch that shit, bro. Like, <laughs> like on some real shit, bro, it's like, I mean, for the betterment of the sport, bro, you got to do this type of shit, bro. I, I understand at this point, bro, I feel like he, I feel like at this point he believes he going to lose. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But it's okay, bro. You know what I mean? It's okay. I mean, I don't, I don't even think you will lose. I think you could win, but I think he think he'll lose at this point because, like, I don't see other reason. You know what I mean? Why he won't fight him? And it's like he's not the only person doing that shit, bro. Everybody who make all this money in the game, mm. they do the same shit, bro. And it's, it's like they the face. They supposed to be the faces of boxing, and it's like, bro, what are they? Like, you get to that, you get to that um, title, you get to that uh, level, and it's like. You don't have no more responsibility. It's like you get to the top and you don't even got to do shit. You know what I mean? You ain't got to maintain what you what you what you did to get to that point. You know what I mean? You see, but see, the casino. This this is this is the argument on both ways, right? You know, Canelo has sixty four professional fights, and you know, you, you know, he's done more than his contemporaries by far. You know, he's done more than his contemporaries by far. Accomplished more in the game. So. It, it, it's, it's, I, I see the argument on both sides. Everybody like, look, we can understand all that. What's up with Canelo? What's up with Benavidez? Now I can kill that argument, yo, yo, though, yo, 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 what, no. what, What's up with Benavidez? Like, we, we get that. You got all this money. You don't accomplish this and that. for Hall of Famous. Okay, that's fine. But what's up with Benavidez, though? <laughs> man, I'm killing that argument, man. <laughs> it, it ain't no other argument, so it's no other. It I ain't no it. other side to see, bro. Yeah. Because, look, bro, this is what I mean by killing the sport, bro. Because, look, bro, LeBron James, he old as hell, right? Right. But he's still required to play the best teams in the NBA. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Every fucking season. You see what I'm saying? Tom Brady went before, like when he before he retired, but he was old as fuck. Even when he was looking bad, he still had to play the best team. You see what I'm saying? He still going to the Hall of Fame. It's like, bro, boxing the only sport where it's like you get to the top and then now it's like you ain't got to do shit. You just on vacation getting paid to show up. You know what I mean? Like, you just getting paid to show up at this point, bro. If you ain't going to fight Benavidez, you just get paid to show up, bro. It's like, niggas just want to watch you because they like you, bro. It's like, you're not putting on the fight. It's like, bro, what the fuck? You know what I mean? And then it's like, you can't even, nobody can even get an opportunity to be at so at so level because you won't even fight a threat. You know what I mean? What you, what you, what you think about the sanctioning bodies? Like, even the, even the, see, that, see, even the sanctioning bodies casino, like even they bowing down. They are like, okay, we going you know what I mean? We going to tap out on this. It's because of the money. Yeah, it's yeah. it's the money. I mean, it's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? It's bullshit. But it's I mean, at the end of the day, they acting desperate. You know what I'm saying? That's some desperate shit. It's not about the sport. It's about like some instant money. Like they don't want to really invest in the sport. It's like if you find one person who making some money, we just going to get behind that shit. We not going to risk our money mm. with none of these other folks. This nigga is proven to make money. That's how bad the sport thing got. Like, the sport don't make money. Canelo make money. The sport don't make money. Tank make money. You see what I'm saying? So, niggas not... The sport ain't shit. I mean, that's what it is. You mm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean... The sport ain't shit. I mean, right now, man, that, and, that, and, that, and that's what I'm saying, fam. Like, um, this it's WWE. 
Um, it's 95% business, 5% sport. Now, of course, the guys who get in the ring, they put their lives on the line and fighting each other. That is true. But at the end of the day, everything is predicated upon the business. And and um, and, and that's just a rattle well. to the situation. And um, there's no, that's why I say you don't know. I, we don't know the rules. We don't know the sanction about the rules. Because somebody could come here and tell me, well, according to rule 3-4, section uh, 6.7, it says right here that, you know, if you if you become the mandatory, you the, the guy who you're the mandatory to has 90 days or 60 days or uh, six months to fight you. And then, but it says to the discretion of the sanction about it. The sanction about it. Man, bro, it all boil down to the sport. Ain't shit, bro, because, bro, if the sport, if the sport was what people gave a fuck about, bro, Canelo couldn't get away with this shit. You know what I'm saying? But niggas don't even be knowing who else in a nigga weight class in the first place. Mm. The casual fans don't know shit. Like, they don't know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, bro, it's the fact that he's able to get away with this shit for so long, it just shows you that the sport ain't nobody even paying attention, bro. Yeah. You know mm. what I'm saying? Man, like, I'm for real, man. the fact that he's able to eat is just show you that like niggas not really paying attention. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. Like, it's crazy. But, all right. Man, salute, man. Casino ATL, man. Stand up, man. I, 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 I you know, Casino like prayers. Casino like prayers. He's a, no, he, he's a diehard. He's a diehard. He like Canelo. He like Canelo and he like Tank. You know, though, that's his guy. You know what I mean? But, um, I mean that just that's just a reality of the situation. What I'm what I'm stipulating is this here. I'm saying Team Benavidez, they're they're all in on the plot. I don't want nobody thinking, I don't call hold on. Yeah, man, well Benavidez really, really trying to get the fight in, you know, his roadblocks up. No, he's been he's been paid, whatever he's been paid, and he's going along with it. You know, just being patient, going along with it. He's been told to just shut up, be quiet, humble yourself. You know, we know what we're doing over here. Talk to him, Al. Al don't spoke to him. Samson Lewis don't spoke to him. They convinced him to sign a three-fight deal. A re oh, he was a free agent now. They convinced him, um, convinced him to sign a three-fight deal with Canelo. So as soon as Canelo signed with the PBC for three fights, everybody automatically assumed, yeah, man, you know, that That means Canelo, Benavidez going to be involved. Now we hear conflicting stories. Benavidez is not a part of it. I'm hearing interviews where Jose Senior said, yeah, man, Canelo ain't going to fight us. You know, it is what it is. We're not worried about it. You know, so it's, it, it tells me that everybody is in on it. Everybody know what's going on, dog. That, that's, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Uh, call him. What's your name? You call him from Martin from Oakland. Uh, Martin from Oakland, two times. Yeah, coach. I got a question. Take your forty-year-old boxing fandom out of it. Take the boxing commandments out of it. Mm. Strictly as a businessman, what do you think is better in the short term for boxing? The sport that's been struggling for a while. For Tank to fight Devin. For Boots to fight Crawford. For Canelo to fight Benavides or keep the status quo, keep having these guys fighting tomato cans and let the casuals have their way. What do you think helps the sport most? Not what helps us diehards, but what do you think helps the sport grow? The top guys got to fight each other. The Crawfords have to fight Boots. Um, the Canelo have to fight Benavides. You know, uh, Devin Haney and Tank will fight each other. That's 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 what's going to help the sport grow. You you know the, when the when the stars when 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 it's all when everything is all on the line and you know in 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 um it, it's, it's it's a high pressure fight. You know you got everything to lose and everything to gain. That's what's going to um uh, you know make the sport exciting. But that's not what that's not what boxing is today. That just relative to the situation. Yeah, because I'm just trying to find some rhyme or reason why. Things have been the way they've been for so long. You feel me? You know, because, I mean, I can't think of the last time I was happy about the way boxing was going unless I was looking at one of the lower divisions. You know what I mean? Yeah, but or see, somebody like Usyk. But see, this is the thing, right? When you, when you brought up casual fans, right? Casual fans only know who the popular fighters are. Casual fans, they know who Canelo is. So Canelo probably got a really, really huge casual fan base. They know who Devin Haney is. They know who uh, Tank Davis is. They know who Ryan Garcia is. So casuals, they look at boxing from a total different standpoint that has nothing to do with boxing. Casuals are mostly celebrity worshipers. They, um, 
they don't really know the sport like that. Yeah, man, my man, yeah, he wasn't there. He knocked that, he knocked that fool out. You saw what he did to him? You do know that your guy knocked out Pope Chop Willie. Yeah, but see, yeah, but see, uh, your Pope Chop Willie. Yeah, but look how look what he did to him. So the casuals, when it, uh, when it comes to boxing, they are so ignorant and the sport is pandering to the casuals. So the casuals yeah. don't know, like, the casuals get online and make arguments for why their favorite fighter, who they are an extreme fan of, why he should not fight, you know, uh, the top guys. Well, hold on, this dude ain't did nothing. And, you know, you know, it's about putting butts in seats. And the casuals was, will, will, will come on, they will become bodyguards, they will become managers, managers, they will become promoters, they will become publicists. The managers come on, I mean, the casuals come on and they put on many different hats. And that's, that's what, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. True. Yeah. But shout out to, um, shout out to, uh, Dog on Mark, man, Old Town Stand Up. Yeah, that, that's what it is. So, um, and see, I don't think the sport of boxing gets it. Like you, like you gotta get something where people's going to be excited about. They're pandering to casual fans of superstar fighters because the casual fans of certain superstar fighters, they don't require their fighter to live up to a boxing criteria. They don't require their fighter. And I told you guys, there's a different fan base in boxing today than it was when I was growing up. It's totally different. Like, you know, well, no, no, man. My father got Versace. He got Fosachi. You know what Fosachi is? Do you mean Ver Versace? Yeah, I mean Fosachi. My father went for, oh, call it, hold on. My father got Fosachi. Yeah, your father in a bro ham. My father driving Lambo with do or die dudes. My, my father got a baddie with him. He got a baddie. Your father ain't got no baddie. Like they use non-boxing talking points to make boxing arguments. You can't make this shit up. This is what's going on today. Um, Carla, what's your name? Where you calling from? It's Curtis from Long Beach. Curtis from Long Beach, talk to me. So y'all talking about uh, what I've been saying? Pretty much, uh, Benavidez don't want to fight. Is that what I'm getting? I mean, I mean, I don't know what to think. Well, he don't want to fight, or he know he can't get to <laughs> fight because I'm 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 I'm, 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 I'm feeling kind of conflicted, um, um, Curtis, because me knowing what I know that what's going on with the sanctioning bodies and the, and the promoters and stuff like that, that man couldn't get the fight if he wanted to. Let's say he was to go on the same, you know what, fuck that, I'm finna sue the WBC, I'm finna get this fight. Guess what, he still ain't gonna get that fight. So, probably not. So, no, no, he's, no, I'm telling you, he's not gonna get it. So it's like, yeah. if, 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 if your team is down with what's going on, and they say, look, you can do this, but guess what? You're going to be sitting on the shelf. You ain't going to fight. You ain't going to make no money. Canelo going to do what he want to yeah. do. He the cash cow. Just take this, what we're giving you, and be patient. And let it let everything run its course. Like, I'm trying to put myself in his shoes as well. So, I mean, I don't, man, I don't know. Like, again, again, bro, what's going on? Everybody in on it. Team Benavidez, Team Canelo, Mauricio Suleiman, everybody's in on it. That's what's going on, so. Yeah, man, it looks like uh, Benavidez don't want to fight, and, Can and Canelo is happy he don't want it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. I don't think either one of them really want it. You yeah. know what I mean? So, again, I think it's just a re – I think it's more financial than anything. I'm not going to say that somebody's scared of somebody. I just think everybody's looking at it like, you know, the Terrence Crawford and Spence situation. Yeah, the hardcore want this fight, but, you know, it's not going to sell like a mega fight. You know what I mean? So – I just think that what they want for it and what Canelo might want to fight that dude and what he might want to fight Canelo, it just doesn't make sense financially. And I think that's what's going on. I, I, I don't think anybody's scared of anybody. I just think it don't make sense financially. You know, everybody's trying to make money. And as it stands right now, Canelo's going to be the only one that makes money. He's going to get his regardless. And I just think that, the you know, the people that's paying for these fights mm -hmm. are looking at it like, well, damn, you know, we got to make something off of it. And Benavidez is looking like, shit, I got to make something too. So... Uh, I think it's a financial thing. I don't think somebody's scared of anybody. I just think it's finances. Well, so, okay, you know, okay, 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 well, okay. Okay, well, if you, well, if you Benavidez, you take short money to get the fight because you believe in yourself. You bet on yourself that you can beat him. 
Like if you've been to be there, so if, you know. it's, if it's if it's a money, let's say let's say I go down this rabbit hole with you. If it's a money issue, okay, look, man, Canelo, what is it? What is it that he want? Canelo gonna get his thirty five million guarantee. Okay, cool. All right, look, man. Well, look, okay, we can't make this fight right now because you say you want ten million. You want what Caleb Plant or them other guys made? No, nah, you know what? I take whatever. I I tell you what. I take half that. I take five million. I take four million. I take three million. Fuck it. I take three, four million just to make the fight because I believe in myself that, you know, the same thing they saying that Shakur should have did with Devin Haney or the same thing they said that, um, that they were saying, well, Crawford should have did with, with, with Spencer Perk. Yeah, just take whatever we give you. 64 to 70, 30, 80, 20. Take whatever we give you. If you believe in yourself, you'll fight them. And then once you beat them, you come back on the rematch and then you can negotiate. So the same rule applies. The same rule applies. Yeah, I'll, so, I'll say you know, that. I, I agree with you. You know what I'm saying? We watched Devin Haney do it in Australia. Yeah, twice. Did, yeah, twice. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Then he fight Lomachenko. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Everybody hollering, you know, bet on yourself and, and <laughs> take the short money. <laughs> Devin Haney is the only one that did it recently. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else is like, oh, no, nah, I'm worth more than that. So, you know, it's only been one fighter recently that I can think of that's done it, and that's Devin. So, I don't know, man. Uh, you know, who knows? I think it's a finance thing, but I... I don't think David and his team really want it because, like I said, they signed a three-fight deal to fight, you know, three other people not named Canelo. Right. And they put the names out there beforehand. So, you know, he already locked into that, you know, unless something changes. But then, you know, you got Canelo's team putting out reports that they're going to fight all three of these dudes. You know, they're going to fight Crawford, uh, Charlo, and uh, Benavidez. Yeah. So who um, knows what's going to happen, man? We just got to wait and see. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We, we have to wait and see. We don't know. We really don't know. Shout out to NBA 13, man. Salute, fam. Yeah, like, like, uh, right. yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. We just got to wait and see because everybody's guessing, speculating. Like, until, until we hear something official, Curtis, on who, who what's going to happen, we won't know. We won't, you know, it's an old saying. You don't know what you don't know until you know it. Yeah. So we won't know until yeah, we it. know what's going on. But if I'm reading an article and Mauricio Suleiman is saying that, Hey, we got it. We, we're going to confirm the mandatory status in March. But then we, even when we confirm it, you know, so we're going to, so he's a mandatory, but we're not going to confirm that he's a mandatory, mandatory until March. And then when we confirm it, there's no, there's no timeline on when I'm going to order the fight that tells you everything you need to know. Yeah. Hey, one more thing, man. Hey, your boy Kelly Plant, he a real brother, man. You see him out there fighting the projects. Yeah, yeah, I saw, I saw, I yeah. You that video. yeah. I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. I tripped off that dude, but I'm gonna let you go though, man. All right, man. Salute, man. Curtis Malone, be salute, fam. You get what I'm saying? Like, 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 forget Canelo, forget David Benavidez. What about the sanctioning body, bro? Well, hold on now. Wait a minute now. Hold on, Coach. Now, nah. now, nah, now, nah, now, nah, now. Nah. Wait a minute now. Now, you know, I know. Now, nah, hold on. Hold on. I know. Now, I know you want to fight Godzilla, but Godzilla, I don't know now. Godzilla, he called hell with King Kong, and you, 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 you better than King Kong. I know you want to fight Godzilla now, but what you gonna have to do now? You gonna have to go through. <laughs> you just can't fight Godzilla first. You gotta fight. Listen, Megatron over there. He wanna fade. After you, after, if you can get by Megatron, Optimus Prime waiting in the cut. You know, then we got Mumra over here, the Thundercats. Then we got Doggone Lion O. You get what I'm saying? Now, well, okay, well, who Godzilla gonna fight? Oh, he gonna fight Snarf Snarf from the Thunder. He gonna fight Snarf. Okay, well, why he fight Snarf? But I get it. I gotta fight Lion O and Mumra. No, no, you asked too many questions. Now, once you get by Lion O, Mumra, Megatron, and Optimus Prime, then, then we, 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 we'll go back and look and see if you did enough to earn the right. Like this is the type of word salad that they be doing online. Mauricio Suleiman, I'm like, bro, come on, man. Uh, shout out to Edwin Castillo. Hey, okay. I'm dropping that quarter of a bam double, your boy. Hey, Leroy. Super Jack received. Playtime's over, boy. boy. Hey, man, shout out, shout out to, uh, shout out to, uh, School of X, man. Salute to Elena. Uh, shout out to Edward. What you say, fam? He, he say, he say, he say, Ben Aductes <coughs> agreed to wait till September. <coughs> Why didn't he say no and demand the fight now? He already ducked Morrell. <laughs> Everyone just blames Canelo. <laughs> oh, so you said, you said he ducked Morrell. See, that's another thing. Like, again, bro, I think y'all missing it. There's an arrangement already set in play for who David Benavidez is going to fight, for who Canelo is going to fight, 
and more than likely who David Morrell is going to fight, right? All of this stuff is just smoke and mirrors. You get what I'm saying? Like David Morrell, I, I think the people who so like the people who don't like David Benavidez, uh, you know, instead of you guys saying that, hey, Canelo was ducking David Benavidez, I get it. You flip it and say that David Benavidez is ducking Morrell. So I so I I get that. I get that. Well, I get I see what's going on. I understand. Trust me, I get it. But what I'm saying is there's a plan that's already in play that everybody's playing out. All of the actors are playing their parts on the award-winning stage play. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Carla, what's your name? Where you calling from? Will from Upstate. Will from Upstate, talk to me. Hey, Coach, listen. You hit it right on the nail. Because before Benavidez signed this three-fight deal with PBC, mm. he, they was calling out Canelo like crazy. Like crazy, right? Once they signed this three-fight deal, I noticed that the calling out toned down. So it's, it's a, from, from my opinion, it's exactly what you said, Coach. He's been paid off. Him and his pop have been paid off to tone it down a little bit. Listen, we're going to give you this three-fight deal. You're not, you're not fighting Canelo. It's not happening. He don't want to fight you. It's not happening at all. But we will give you this three-fight deal and we'll throw you a little some extra to stop mentioning that man's name because he's the damn president right now, and he you about to get all of us fired. And and that's just how I feel, uh, Coach. I feel like you hit it right on the nail. I feel like they gave him the deal mm -hmm. and included it, you know, a ba on, on some backdoor shit, Coach, on some backdoor shit like, yo, we're going to throw you a little extra, you and your pops. Listen, stop mm -hmm. calling that man's name. Stop calling him out. You're making him look bad. You're making him angry. Stop doing it. And that's what I feel, Coach. That's all I got for you today, Coach. Keep doing your thing. Man, shout out to Will from Upstate, man. Upstate salute, fam. I mean, for me, again, again, guys, for me, for me, for me, it's simple. For me, it's simple. This is what's going on, business of boxing. And uh, this is why, let me tell you something. This is why I keep going back. I keep going back to this. But when you, when, when you are put in a, a certain position, he should be, go I mean, he's able to, like, like me. You know, when I was in the position, I can pick and choose who I want to, because I, I, I earned that right. Canelo's in a position he can pick and choose who he wants to. We've heard that, hey, don't nobody make Canelo do anything. I think everybody, everyone realizes that now. The IBF, they bowing down. The WBA, they bowing down. The WBC, they're bowing down. The WBO, they're bowing down. Al Heyman, he's bowing down. Samson Lewis, He's bowing down. Mauricio Suleiman, he's bowing down. Everybody is bowing down. You guys remember when Godzilla, what when the God was the Godzilla movie, right? When Godzilla fought, um, he uh, came out a few years ago. He fought all of the monsters. He fought Gamora. Oh, uh, Carla, hold on. Gamora was looked upon as the king of all of the the three headed dragon. He was looked upon as the king of all of the monsters, like the the the, the king of all the monsters, right? And um, Carla, hold on. And um, him and Godzilla fought. I think he faded Godzilla at first, right? Then Godzilla had to come back and regroup. And when Godzilla came back and charged up, Godzilla faded him up. He cut his neck off, and then the new, new head grew back. And then Godzilla ended up eating him and devouring him. He chopped his head off and devoured him and killed him, right? And all of the monsters came from all over the world, you know, and they bowed down and paid homage to Godzilla. And he sat there, and he, 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 he screamed and shot radiation in the air because all the monsters bowed down. Guess what? All of the sanctioning bodies and the promoters are bowing down. Al Heyman, I hate to, it's, it's, you know, I, I know you say brothers don't, don't like this, but he's bowing down to the boy from Mexico. Samson, bowing down. Everybody is bowing down. You get what I'm saying? Uh, Carla, what's your name? Where you call from? What's happening, Coach? John, John from Colorado. John from Colorado. Uh, talk to me. Yeah, so... I mean, what what happened here? Did we just let Canelo's brand recognition get bigger than the game? You know, I mean, when this happened in MMA, McGregor pulled this shit. It's it's actually it's not healthy for the sport in the long run because when this star goes, so do his, you know, the casual viewers that watch him. Mm. You know, so I, look, this might be good for business in the short term, 
But in the long term, it keeps casuals and hardcores away from buying pay per views. You know, it's so it's I, nobody's ducking. This is this is business. It's just bad business. You know, it's a quick money grab. They're not looking at the long game. That's all. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, but no, I. I was calling in to talk about some other stuff. Um, yeah, I just, I just need you to summarize it. Just, get, just summarize it, you know, because we got other calls calling in. Sure, sure. So Boxing Scene bought Probox. Can you kind of talk about the implications of being able to control the narrative and possibly force fights and call certain entities or organizations out for some of their shenanigans? You mean you mean um, since, bo- you mean since then, uh, Probox bought Boxing Scene? Yeah. 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 Um, and then also, uh, you know, like we're giving Canelo all this. Gr- I'm not a Canelo fan or a hater. I don't. I'm in, totally indifferent to him. But we're giving him all this grief. I'm like, why aren't we giving Tank the grief? Like, what what divisions has Tank unified? What divisions has Tank is he undisputed in? What names does Tank have? You know, what I'm saying Roly. Garcia, I mean, it's fucking ridiculous. Are you, uh, Canelo, sixty something fights deep, and we're spending half a day giving him grief when we got dudes like Tank taking cherry picks, like he's in WWE. Uh, that's pretty much it. I appreciate your show. Talk All right, shout out to John from Colorado. Yeah, um, the pro, uh, the pro box buying out boxing scene. I don't know how much that's going to change anything. To be fair. Uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. I don't think that's going to change anything. Pretty much the way boxing works, all of the boxing brass are in cahoots with each other. All of them are. Like I'm telling you right now, like in the the business, the business, of, the business of boxing circle, from networks to platforms or whatever, all of them are in cahoots together in some form or fashion, right? Um, now, but as it relates to Tank, um, Tank is is in a, is another guy. Tank is. Tank has a 99.999% casual fan base. And I think what Floyd Mayweather did with Tank um, was pretty good because he wasn't able to do it with any other fighter prior to Tank Davis. Um, but he did it with Tank, right? So Tank has the Floyd Mayweather co-sign. The, so he has the flow modes, uh, the celebrity worship culture, and Tank falls in line with the celebrity worship culture you know, he has um, he has a big fan base, and they worship the hell out of Tank. You get what I'm saying? So Tank doesn't have to do things that other fighters would have to do in order to sell and make money because Tank fan base is damn near 100% casual, and they don't require him to do things that a Devin Haney probably would have to do or a Shakur Stevenson or even a Ryan Garcia to a degree or a um, uh, Caleb Plant, or a David Benavidez, or a Jamal Chalo, or Terrence Crawford, or whatever. Like he has to tank, tank. You know, tank is a sweet, sweet. I don't call it hold on. Tank is in a very, very sweet situation. Like it's, you know, it's a good spot. Now he has to find the right dance partner to try to make the type of money that he wants to make, because he's not going to make that Ryan Garcia money fighting anyone outside of a Ryan Garcia. Oh, he's gonna have to fight someone that's close to it. Do you get what I'm saying? So we'll we'll see. But yeah, but um, Tank 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 is you can't compare Tank and Canelo because one guy has done way more. Like there's no uh, call. Hold on, there's no comparison to Tank and Canelo. Like you look at Tank, you look at Canelo. There's no comparison. You know what I mean? Like literally, like he's, you're talking about Venus and Mars, two different planets. To be fair, but the casual fan base is what Tank has. He has the TikTokers, he has the Instagrammers, the, uh, the, the the teeny boppers. He has the guys that they're gonna threaten you. They're gonna pull up. They're gonna do this and that, and they're gonna be. You know, get what I'm saying? Tank Tank has that. He has that. Uh, Carlos, what's the name? What you it from? What's up, Coach? It's JBN. JBN from Fort Worth. Talk to me. What's up, man? <clears throat> I'm telling you, Coach, all that ducking and cherry picking that David did in the past, uh-huh. it's haunting him right back. I'm, um, if he had uh, done what he was supposed to do in the past 10 years that he's been a pro, by now he would have had a big enough name to where his name combined with Canelo would have made that fight sell over 1.5 million pay-per-views, I'm pretty sure. Mm. So there, he would have he would have had a lot of leverage to... Um, 
to make that fight because he would, could never would have said like, okay, um, you know, you bring this to the table. You, you have sold this much, but because he's, he's been ducking and cherry picking and he's been protected and his whole career and that messed him up. He hasn't been able to build a fan base because in the 10 years that he's been a pro, if he would have fought the champions that were around when he was a champion, uh, I'm pretty sure that he would have had a big enough name by now. The reason that he's struggling right now to get that fight is because he's using the mandatory thing. But like you've said before, we live in an era where mandatories really don't get respected and it's all about the business. So if by now Benavides had a bigger name, I'm pretty sure that fight would have happened by now. I no, do I mean, believe that the I mean, reason... Mandatories, mandatories do get respected. It just depends on who the fighter is. The fighter, well, this is what's going on. The fighter that, that has, that, um, that pretty much is the bigger draw is the one that dictates and what goes on he they're in the position to do that with the sanctioning bodies and stuff like that they, they they're going to buy down that that's what that's what they're going to do um so benavidez would never have a big enough name to justify a fight with canelo but if benavidez was the champion and he had a mandatory it'd be something totally different going on with benavidez if, if he was the champion they would tell him no you got to fight this guy next and we're going to strip you so there's a double standard in the sport of boxing depending on who the fighter is and i and i think i think that's obvious at this point i don't i don't, I don't think there's a double standard when it comes to david and the wbc because it's because of the wbc that uh david became a champion in the first place if you remember when the wbc bell went vacant they elevated the guy, that guy, Ronald Gabriel, from the top 20 mm -hmm. all the way to the top 10. So David Benavides could fight a tomato can. Uh, when David Benavides got popped, uh, when he lost, I think, no, it was when he lost, um, he lost the belt to the, to the scale because he couldn't make the weight because, uh, he had Taco Tuesday going on that week. Um, <clears throat> they removed, uh, David Benavides from the rankings of the 168 pound. They made him the official number one contender for Archer Betterbeer's WBC belt. But um, David Benavides and his team sent a letter, or they told Mauricio Suleiman that they did not want to be on the 175-pound rankings. So they brought him down back to the 168-pound rankings. So, you know, if they would have been consistent, if, if, if the WBC kept consistency with him, he would have had to fight Archer Petervia, and Archer Petervia would have knocked him the fuck out completely. David Benavides does not have anything uh, for Archer Petervia. So you see how their inconsistency has helped David Benavides in the past. So they can't keep a consistency with him because their inconsistency has helped him in the past as well. Well, this is what, 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 what you, admit, what you are, I'm going I'm, I'm to let you go. Um, but, but shout out, shout out to uh, J JBN from uh, Texas. Salute to you, fam. But you agree with me. That's a double standard. You are agreeing with me. That's a double standard. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So they are consistent at being inconsistent. I mean, depending on who the fighter is, the rule changes. And I get it. I understand that. I get it. Um, call him. What's your name? Where you from? Hey, hey, Coach, this is Will Tutai from Upstate. Will from Upstate, talk to me. Coach, man, these dudes is killing me. These soft-ass dudes calling up, talking about, oh, if, if Benavido, Benavidez was a superstar, maybe he... Bebo wasn't no damn super superstar. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Jamel Charlo was out of the ring for damn near, what, two, three years? He wasn't no superstar. What are y'all talking about? Now we hear he about to fight Jamar. Listen, it's just like what you said, Coach. This shit pisses me off because I'm starting to feel like some of these callers is in, Canelo is in their pocket. You know what I mean? Like he blessing them. Hey, call Coach Malachi, bitch ass show, and come up with something to to stand up for me. Man, stop it, bro. Benavidez has been this man mandatory for what three, four, four years now, something like that. Three years, like stop it, bro. It's just like what you said, Coach. It depends on who you are and if and if the champion want the smoke or not. I just really want Canelo to drop the damn belt and let everybody else fight for them, bro. You can't keep holding on to the belts in your weight class while you fighting people that's two classes up or, or you want to duck some smoke so you're going to try to cherry pick. You're going to go up a size and try to cherry pick like he did with Bevo. It was a cherry pick gone wrong. 
stop the cat, stop the goofy shit. Canelo Duck and Benavidez, we all get it, we all see it. It is what it is. You can love them, you can support them, but let's just let's just call it what it is, man. A dog gonna be a dog, a cat gonna be a cat, and a damn duck gonna be a duck. Shout out to Coach, the best show in the world, man. I'm out. Shout out to Will, Upstate New York. Yeah, um, I mean the, the way the, the way the way boxing work is is pretty much you know again he's the draw. That's anybody. Tank Davis, same situation. Um, you know, it just it just, it just depends. You know, I, and I tell you guys, we talk about this time and time again on this show. What do we say on this show? The sanctioning bodies, especially the WBC, they are consistent at being inconsistent. Nigga, I'm, nigga, I'm talking face on the bro short. Boy. Lights out. Okay. Hear me? Okay. Clack on, clack on. okay. You got me fucked up, cuz. I mean, you know what? I mean, it is what it is. I get it. I mean, I get it. I understand. Again, I'm not. I'm not mad. I'm not emotionally attached to this shit. I'm let. I'm gonna let the. I'm gonna let the Canelo on uh, call. Hold on. I'm gonna let the Canelo fans and the David Benavidez fans have their digital war online. I, I give two fucks because when Canelo get paid, Coach Malachi don't get a goddamn dime. When Benavidez get paid, Coach Malachi don't have a dime. So get a dime. So uh, I don't. I don't have any skin in the game. Again, I don't look at your favorite fighter the way you look at him. You know, I'm, I'm my my guys are the old school guys. I give to I get it. This is the celebrity worship culture. I get it. The motherfuckers get emotionally, you know, they I understand, I get it, you know what I mean? So I'm I'm not tripping either way. I'm just telling you guys, the moral of the story is this here. Everybody is in on it. That's all I'm saying. Everybody's in on it. Team Benavidez, Canelo, Sanction the Bodies, Al, Samson Lewis, everybody's in on it. That's all that's all I'm saying. There's a plan. Carla, what's your name? Where you call it from? Man, it's Drew two times, coach. Uh, Drew, two times, talk to me. Man, the last caller and then Casino, like, they don't get it. Remember, Coach, when uh, Canelo turned down the first CBC deal? It was just a one fight for Caleb Plant. Tom mm -hmm. Brown said what that offer was. Yeah, I remember that um, when, when Canelo first walked away, they offered him what um, Spence. Remember when he just fought Caleb Plant and Ryan and Floyd got in his feeling? You say, you say, um, you say, when, when he took I, the money and wrecked. Yeah, sit the money and left. Yeah, they thought they was hoping that he. They, and then, they, yeah, they, they tried to sign him to a multi fight deal, but he didn't, and he he left him when he came back. They only fought yeah. one fight deal. And Tom, remember, remember Tom Brown said like when they were negotiating, like Errol Spence was on the table for Canelo. Mm -hmm. All Canelo did, coach, was went back and signed that original deal. So he's fighting the Charlos and was supposed to fight Spence, and Spence beat Crawford. These callers getting mad at what it is. Go blame it Al Heyman, and they're like, let the belt go, coach. Canelo drops the belt. There's still no money for the fights, coach. They don't got a budget. They only got one show in the first quarter. So I don't know what these uh, these callers are calling about saying, let the belts go, let the fighters fight. There is no fucking money for these fighters to fight. That's why they're waiting on Canelo. They need the profits from a Canelo fight to put other fights on. They're robbing Peter to pay Paul. Mm -hmm. So before y'all get y'all pennies in a bunch, realize that the man that y'all are blessing and loving, I'm a clown Al Heyman. We don't thank Al Heyman on this show. Al Heyman fumbled the bag, and now he needs Canelo to fight these cherries so he can have more money to put the other fights on. Because all the pay per views are going double wood, coach. I'm looking Even at the Even Sam said, I've been blocking. I've been. What'd you say? No, go ahead. Go ahead. I say, even Sam Salukowitz on that interview said, like, I've been holding up the Morrell fight. So let's not, let's not blame. Um, huh? You heard him say that, coach? Yeah, yeah I heard him say that. I heard him say that. Yeah, so let's everybody blaming Canelo. Can, uh, without a cash cow, there's no fucking money for the other for the promoters and and them to make other fights with the smaller guys on a roster because those guys ain't sell tickets. Those guys don't need in TV ratings and TV deals. So, so I'm, you wonder, guys I'm, saying, I'm, like, I'm wondering, better? I'm Sorry, wondering, coach. I'm wondering what's going to happen because I remember I had Rick Glazier on the show and he said that a lot of the other a lot of the fighters that are with, with the PBC. They have been fighting on smaller fight cards. I was wondering what's going to happen because it appears that uh, the PBC Al Heyman is only putting on pay per view fights. So what's going to happen to the non pay per view fights? You know, like people they're leaving. Coach, look at Luis Ortiz, another one that just left. He just got it's just official. He's fighting on a top rank undercard. Yeah, I saw that. He's fighting. Um, who is he fighting? Um, uh, Fa He's Jogba, fighting Fa, yeah. right? Yeah, Fa Jogba, yeah. Yeah. So these callers calling in saying, "Let the fuck go, Coach." They're, like, there's no money to put these fights on. You mean to tell me, okay, David Benavidez, David Morrell fight for a vacant strap pay-per-view? Y'all going to pay? Y'all going to bitch that it's pay-per-view. 
Because nobody's going to buy that shit because there is no fucking money. Okay? The money's outside of America. Everybody complain like, casino said, like, that's why nobody watches bo- Bro, we watch boxing outside of America. Y'all just stuck on the American game. I'm watching Junto Nakatani this weekend. All right? There's always good boxing on. You guys just just stuck on these American fighters and stuck on, on the PBC guys. Like, when did David become this killer, coach? He's been a professional for 11 years. He's just a basic mandatory. That's it. There's no legacy behind it. Nobody's going to remember that when Canelo's giving his Hall of Fame speech, no one's going to say, like, oh, Canelo, you don't deserve it. You didn't fight David Benavidez. David Benavidez ain't even a Hall of Famer. David Benavidez became a pro the same time Anthony Joshua and still ain't fought a legit puncher at 168. So miss me with that shit. But that's my call, Coach. You know, we got to cook them, too. Right. And just like you said, Coach, they're all, they're all in on it, and there's no money for these other fighters. I shot a that's why they kiss in Canelo's ass. All right. I'm looking at, I'm looking, I'm looking at, I'm looking at this schedule over here. And this, this is the schedule, right? Um, boxing schedule. And so we know we have March 30th, Keith Thurman, Tim Zhu, Roller Romero, Isak Cruz, Laura versus uh, Zarafa, Zarafa, uh, Fundora versus uh, Serhi. I don't even know how to pronounce this guy's name. Elijah Garcia versus Kyron Davis, Julio Cesar uh, Martinez versus Angelino Cordova. And this is, I'm anxious to see fight now. I want to know what is this, what is this price is going to be? Watch on Prime. Let's click here. Okay. Let's go back. I don't see nothing there. I, we need to see exactly. Uh, hmm. Do anybody know what the price of this pay-per-view is going to be? It's next month on the 30th of March. Has the price been put out yet on this pay-per-view fight? That's the only fight that I'm seeing. So, you know, it, it's strange because it's strange because they only have, um, Carla, hold on. They only have one fight on this so far this year, one fight card. And this is the third, no, well, March the 30th is the last, second to the last day of the first quarter of the business year. So you're going all of January, no fights. All of March, all of February, no fights. Pretty much all of March, no fights. But the last second to the last day, going into the fourth, second quarter. You get what I'm saying? So that's um, I don't know something, something. You know, when people go to talk about the money ain't there, they making a valid goddamn point. Um, Carla, what's your name? You calling from? What's up, Carla? This is um, Derek from Florida. Um, Derek, go on, talk to me. Yeah, I, I, I have seen an interview, uh, interview with Ellaby, but he said like the biggest fight is David versus uh, Canelo. I don't know if you've seen the interview. They, he asked about that. Ellaby said it. So he talking about ain't no money. That's the money fight. That, that's the, that's going to sell control. David versus Canelo. So all this all this Canelo fanboy talking about, oh, ain't no money, but man, fight Benavidez. That's the big money fight. All this Jamal Charlo and, oh. and Cherry Pickens. That's not no big money fight. He got to fight Benavidez. Yeah, this uh, that's, that's how he's gonna get the money. Yeah, I got look like we got a look like we got one of these. Yeah, uh, uh, so, uh Sonya Dumas. I, I think I remember you, Sonya. You was one of my old trolls back in the day. You was one of my old trolls back in the day, Sonya. You gonna need to chill. You gonna need to chill the fuck out for your bitch ass be back on the block list. I remember. <laughs> I, re- I, re- I remember you. I remember you doing the Tyson Fury era. You know, you was one of the ones who. Had so much to say about me in the past, so you better, you better, you, you, what you need to do, just chill out, chill, stop being so goddamn emotional, you know what I mean? <laughs> and um, before, b- before we put your ass, before we put your ass on the block list, you know, you, you, yeah. But anyway, go ahead, go ahead, dude. Yeah, well, yeah, that's okay, cool. But yeah, that, that, was, that was what I'm saying. Like, because the Canelo and David is the big money fight. All this ain't no money behind it. All that fight, mm-hmm. be there. That's where the money gonna come at. These Canelo fanboys, they just scared as hell. And David's not ducking. He just want them belts. Canelo's nipping on belts, coach. He's just trying to keep cherry picking and holding on belts. It's time for others to give it up. Like, David Morrell, all these other fighters coming up. That's what we doing. He's just holding on belts of hostages. He just scared to fight Benavidez. So all these Canelo fanboys are scared as hell. That's my call. All right, shout out to Derek. Derek from Florida. 
Yeah, um, I mean, this this is you know you get what I'm saying. Like they got a they got a March 30th fight. <sighs> I'm gonna I'm I'm tell you. I'm gonna tell you something. The game needed. Pro box is what the game needed. Pro box. I think they put fights on every Wednesday. They're not too far from my house where I live at in Tampa. They're in Plant City, which is in the same county, Hillsborough County that, that I live in. Um, pro box is what the game needed, and um, the venue holds about. I'm trying to do a guesstimation. The venue holds about maybe. 1500 people i'm guesstimating i'm guesstimating i could be wrong but I, i've been i've been to the pro box once i'm going to go again the next fight they have and um it's packed it's packed it's packed so pro box is what the game needed you get what i'm saying i'm not going to lie uh we get to see those other fight cards and stuff like that and you know um i want you guys to know something casuals Oh, uh, Carla, hold on. Casuals care about the star names, the big names. Boxing fans care about just boxing, the sport of boxing. There's a difference. Casuals care about certain fighters. That's why you'll see them ride, like they're living their lives vicariously through their fighter, just like Sonya, the, uh, uh, the dumb motherfucker in the chat named Sonya. They live, yeah, buy down to Canelo. Okay, like what type of joy you find in buy down to Canelo? Canelo don't even know, Canelo don't even know your dumb ass exists. Sonya, dumb ass. He don't even know you exist. Literally. This was the motherfuckers who said I was racist against white people. Sonya's and, and races against Hispanics. I remember that was one of the motherfuckers said that shit right there, right? And that's cool. Yeah, you know, he unsubscribed level. I don't give a fuck. But what I'm saying is, Canelo don't even know you exist. You the same broke motherfucker, high behind the avatar today that you was yesterday. Yeah, buy down to Canelo. Buy down to Canelo. Okay, look, so so what joy you find in that? You still broke ain't got no money. Still high behind the avatar trolling, right? These motherfuckers act like when Canelo, like I told you, I call it, hold on. These they're living their lives vicariously through these fighters. They're living their lives vicariously through Canelo. They're living their lives vicariously through uh Tank, the Devin Haney, Shakur, um, any of these fighters, Crawford, whatever. These 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 new booty boxing fans, these extremists, they're living their lives vicariously through these fighters as though when their fighter fights, they get paid. True, true, true. Um, call what's your name when you call it from? What's up, coach? It's D Block Two Time. D Block, talk to me. You know what, coach? You're right. You're right, coach. Why do they do that? I never understood that shit. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, he ain't going to know who you are at the end of the day, coach. You know, I mean, what I love about boxing is every 10 years we get somebody that comes up. Every 10 years. We get to come up and see a great fighter come up and, and, and you know, where his legacy stands. He's o There's always going to be a fighter that pushes himself to be in front of the pack. You know, we had Canelo Alvarez this generation. Before that, we have Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao. And then before that, we have Oscar La Hoya. I mean, Coach, that's why I love boxing. Who do you think is going to be this generation's next upcoming boxer that's going to be in the frontier? Who, who do you think, Coach? Just ask me a question. I don't know. I have, I have no way of knowing that. Um, I don't know, man. I mean, you know, it, it, I guess it depends on who they crown or who, who can, you know, who, who the casual fan base, who can garner the casual fan base. Um, yeah, I think Tank Davis is doing a good job at that with his audience. To be fair, mm -hmm. Devin Haney is mm -hmm. trying to get to that point. Ryan Garcia is doing a good job yeah. of that. Um, Devin Haney yeah. is trying to get to that point by fighting Ryan Garcia, and if he can win, we'll see how that yeah. works out. So, um, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. That's you know, um, I would say outside of Canelo, maybe Tank, you know, but Tank would have to Tank would have to fight some names. Like you would have to do at least what Canelo did. You got to fight the top name guys. Yeah. You know, when, yeah. um, um, unfortunately he hasn't done that as of yet. So we'll see exactly, you know, he'll, he'll, he's, he's, he'll be 30 years old this year. Uh, Tank and Ryan Garcia, both of them have good, both of them have, um, Ryan has the commercial appeal and he has the casual yeah, from social media. Tank has, he doesn't have commercial appeal, but he has Camille with, he has appeal with the hip hop community and the streets. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, 
um, you know, it, I, I don't know. We'll, I don't. I don't know, man. It's kind of hard. But I, I would say maybe those two guys are the front runner ups over here in North America. I, I, I'm gonna let you go like this, coach. Cause I always appreciate you letting me in the show. Mm-hmm. I remember when Floyd Mayweather didn't want to go up and fight Triple G. I remember that because he said it was too much for him. You know, and, and that for me, kind of, kind of, if it was Manny Pacquiao, I would have think I would think Manny Pacquiao would have would have fought Triple G. I'm just saying if. You know, if he could go up and, and fight Margarito, and it was a tough fight, mm. uh, I don't know why Floyd didn't do that. He didn't, at the end of his career, he, didn't, he just didn't want to take that chance. Now, if he were to take that chance, mm. then I think he would have been a top 10 pound for pound fighter all time if he would have took on Triple G. You got anything to say about that, Coach? Who you talking about, Floyd? Yeah. You I remember mean, when I they mean, asked, I mean, they said, I mean, hey, a lot of people, ahead, a lot of people, a lot of people feel that Floyd is already a top five. So, I mean, that's subjective. Yeah. All of that is subjective, yeah. you know. Yeah. It is what yeah. it is. All, all, of, all of that shit is subjective anyways. You know, Floyd had a damn good career. He fought the fights. He, You know, yeah. some people feel yeah. the people feel the way they feel about Floyd, but it is what it is. Um, yeah. You know, just like when Canelo it, retires, it, he, he going to be first battle yeah. Hall of Famer. Resume going to speak for itself. It is what it is. So, I mean. And I'm going to let it go like this. Thank you so much, Coach, again. And next time they talk about Canelo Alvarez ducking and dodging Benavides. They need to look back and see what Benavides been ducking and dodging. D block, D tail, D to the D bit. Shot D block. Yeah, see, see, like me, right? I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I'm, I'm, and, I, and I say this time and time again. Over here, man, like I don't give a fuck about your, you know, these guys, these motherfuckers' feelings and emotions. I'm not emotionally attached to these fighters like that. I tell a motherfucker time again. If you don't like the content over here at True Media Boston Radio, just like you freely brought your ass over here, you can freely leave. I won't miss you. I promise you that. I'm good at what I do. There's a reason why you're here. True, true, true. It's simple as that. Simple as that. Um, hold on. Caller, what's your name? Where you calling from? Uh, this is Mayo from the Shire. Mayo from the Shire. Talk to me, fam. Hey, what's going on, Coach? Man, it was a um, good show today, good topic. Um, how I feel about this whole thing is if Canelo is willfully deciding not to fight David Benavidez, mm-hmm. that's cool. He could cast cow. He could do what he want. But he just got to deal with the repercussions of that because as a fans – a boxing, like, that's the fight we want to see. Mm-hmm. And if you've been paying attention to Canelo Alvarez, I know he the cash cow or whatever. been paying attention to his pay-per-view numbers, like, they've been dropping since Triple G because he's been fighting who he wants to fight. Like, nobody asked for D-Ball and fucking Ryder. I mean, I know it's mandatory and she got to do what she got to do, but, like, he, he's taking fights. He's been doing what he wants to do. You know what I mean? And when he fights, the fights that the fans demand, he be touching like the millions and stuff like that. Like his last pay per view fight, like six hundred thousand. Tank Davis don't fight nobody. He outsold him last year. So the way I see it, the writing's on the wall. Like Tank Davis outsold him with Ryan Garcia last year. Even though Tank don't fight nobody, that was a fight that the boxing fans have been demanding. You know what I mean? Like any one of those lightweights of that that four king matchup that people been demanding is gonna do well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, number one, I, I, th- I think, but, I think, but 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 the tanks, take the tank and Ryan situation that was an uh, anomaly, you know what I mean? That was a one off, that was lightning in a bottle. Um, to to to, I don't think it was though, okay. But guess what? We're gonna find I think it was, we're gonna find out, we're gonna find out in tank next fight. See, that's gonna tell us the story. We look at what he did, yeah, no, we're gonna find out, we're gonna find out, no, no, we're gonna find out, we're gonna find out what Ryan Garcia does not name. That's what we're gonna find out. Yeah, but yeah, but what I'm saying is because like Tank Davis before then, what was he selling? Like this is what I'm saying. He was selling like 200k, 100k before then. Mm-hmm. Ryan Garcia never been on pay per view before, but that was just a fight that we've been wanting to see. That that was matchups. To Devin, Ryan Tank, any of them matching up is gonna be like super successful. When Gilly the Kid had uh Tank on the podcast, like oh we want to see you versus these. That's like what the people want. That's what the people want to pay for. That's what the people want to see. And right now, the people want to see Canelo versus David Benavidez. Like, they tried to do the Undisputed versus Undisputed. In theory, that would have been good. You know, you would think, are right, these two elite fighters in a sport. You got all the legacy behind it. Mm-hmm. But it didn't do 
they didn't do what Caleb Plant, he did with Caleb Plant. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, that's 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 what I want to say. Is I feel like and Nello can do what he want to do, but when his numbers start weighing, he's not making as much money as he. And that's why I thought he went over to the PBC in the first place. I thought he was smart enough to know the writing was on the wall. Like, all right, you know, my numbers ain't doing what they usually do. Pay per view after pay per view, they've been dropping and dropping and dropping. Just to fight the people with the man, I'm gonna get them what they want. Let me go over to PBC and you know knock knock this dude off. But if he fuck around and fight Charlo again and fucking. Somebody gonna outfill his ass this year. If he do that, if he go down that road, hopefully he fight David Benavidez. I know people like all oh, David Duckin, he hasn't done nothing, but that's it don't change the fact of like what the people want to see. Like I pay for all these sites. You know I what guess, I mean? I like you. I want to see what I want to see. But yeah. All right, shout out to me. But yeah, that's my, that's my call, coach. All right, salute fam. Yeah, I don't think he understand what I was saying. Ryan, Ryan Garcia and Tank David was an anomaly. And that was, that, you know, that, that was lightning in the bottle. That was a one-off, you know, because the reason why, and, and Mayo disagreed with me, and I'm like, no, I'm going to tell you why. Because he cut me off, but look at what Tank was doing prior to Ryan Garcia, and let's see what he does after Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia was a part of that equation. So you have to judge people based on what they consistently do and what they consistently sell. Ryan Garcia, last fight wasn't on pay-per-view. This fight is going to be on pay-per-view. So we'll see what he sells with Devin Haney. Will it get close to what he did with Tank? And if it doesn't, then you know the reason why that fight was so big because Tank Davis was a part of the equation. And if Tank don't sell what he sold with Ryan in his next fight pay-per-view, then you'll know that it's because Ryan was a part of the equation, i.e., therefore, it was an anomaly. Do you get what I'm saying? It's not the norm. Because if it was the norm, then their track record would show, hey, this is what he'd been doing prior to Ryan. But his track record show he'd done nowhere near that. So that's what I mean by that. Uh, Carla, what's your, Carla, what's your name? What are you calling from? What up, Coach Mark from Jersey? Mark from Brick City, talk to me. Uh, coach, um, I've been listening to the show and just listening to people. The more I hear people, I hear people with a lot of great points. And then again, I hear a lot of people from both sides of, of the spectrum where asinine, like, uh, you know, points because I heard you the first time, Coach, when you said, you know, it's the plan in play. going to fight. Charlo, and then they, they're going to leave Benavides for the last. So why does everybody keep calling all Benavides is ducking, all the uh, uh, Canelo's ducking, and, and everybody has an opinion. Then you, then you have these people making comparisons to tank situation as far as uh, uh, pay-per-view stuff with Canelo when it's two totally different, different things. There's not even no similarity. When it comes to that, like they're always comparing tank situation with Canelo, and those guys are far from different. I don't, I don't know, mm. but you know, I understand what's what's happening here. You know, I don't know who's ducking who. I, I really don't care. I just want to see the fight. You know, if Canelo's gonna fight, you know, Charlo Benavides, and, and like you said, Coach, they were Benavides. Dad said they're gonna fight Caleb Plant. They're gonna fight uh, Andrade, and they're gonna fight David Morrow. So what are we waiting for? Like, what are we talking about? They're already telling you what they're gonna do, mm. and you expect something else. Like everybody expects another fight Benavides in the uh, in the first fight of the contract. Does that make any sense? I mean, what, what this, you gotta say about this, that? This is the thing, right? Why why shouldn't it make sense? It, because this 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 is the this is a two sided argument. Like, okay, this is what I'm hearing from certain Canelo fans. I argue both sides of the coin. I know Canelo fans right now. Ring IQ, my main man Jules is one of them. He want to see Canelo fight David Benavidez bad because he feels that David Benavidez, Canelo will easily dispatch of him. That's how he feels. But then you hear the argument, well. David Benavidez ain't gonna, Canelo ain't gonna fight him next. He gonna say that one for last because that's a tougher fight. So in one breath, they say David Benavidez is nobody, he ain't fought nobody, and Canelo would destroy him. 
But then in another breath, they say, well, he gonna fight him, but we gonna save him last because he's a tougher fight. So I'm like, I'm like which one is it? As it relates to that. Now, exactly. as it relates to yeah. the plan, David Benavidez signed a three fight deal after he was a free agent with Al Hamas PBC. And knowing that he's not going to fight Canelo. So that means he was in agreement with whatever plans that they have going on with Canelo. He's in agreement with the sanctioning bodies, Mauricio Suleiman in particular, because he's the WBC intern champion in the mandatory. He's in agreement with his um, uh, promoter, Samson Lewis, and he's in agreement with Al Heyman and Team Canelo. So everybody's in agreement. Hey, look, this fight ain't happening for whatever the reason may be. Whether you feel that Canelo is ducking, not wrong with that. If you feel Benavidez is ducking, not wrong with that. If you feel both of them are ducking, not wrong with that. However you feel, because I'm not going to get caught up in nobody else's feelings. But for whatever the reason may be, there's a plan in place. I think that's obvious. I, th I think that's very obvious, and the plan is being executed. So that's why once I understand that, I have an understanding of it, I, I don't have any emotional attachment to it anymore, to be fair. So. Me either. That's why I, I listen to the show and I hear uh, I, the, fir the first, uh, that, that was my thought. But when I heard you confirm it, that that is already the plan at hand. What's the point of, you know, everybody so emotional and calling, talking about this guy's duck. And then you got the Canelo fans like D-Block talking about, you know, talking about Dave Benavides you know, hasn't done anything. It's not like, I don't even care if he does any, if he, whatever he did. Like, that's a fight people want to see. Just give it to them. Give it to them and that's it. And get it out the way. You know? Whatever. All right. But anyway, coach, that was, that's my Shout opinion, Martin, man. Great City, topic man. Salute, today, man. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, so, I mean, I know for a fact, like, Ring got killed. He won that fight bad. He like, man, Canelo gonna kill this dude. You know what I mean? And my thing is, you, you guys know me. I'm not with putting fighters in the witness protection program. I don't give a fuck how rabid a certain fighter fan base is. I don't feel about your fighter the way you do. I don't. I'm not caught up in your racial Olympics. I'm not caught up in none of that shit. This shit boxing. When these motherfuckers get paid, they don't pay you. These motherfuckers don't know you nor me. They don't know us. They don't give a fuck about us. So I'm not here making arguments vehemently for multimillionaires. That shit don't even make no motherfucking sense to me. You get what I'm saying? And if you're an old crusty motherfucker, why are you making a straw man arguments for multimillionaires and living your life vicariously through them? I don't know. I, 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 I say that you must have been a failure in your life at some point in time. And so now this is your way of living your life vicariously through your younger fighter who you fanboying for or whatever. Either way, Coach Malachi don't give a fuck. I give two, three, four, five fucks. You get what I'm saying? But my, what I'm saying is, there's a plan in play. This is what's going on. Team Vita Bidez is a part of it. Canelo, Team Canelo is a part of it. Make what make what you will of it. I don't care. You get what I'm saying? I'm just laying it out how it is. Again, I ain't dealing with nobody's feelings. However you feel is however you feel. You know what I mean? Like I, 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 really, I really don't give a damn. Again, you know what I mean? So, And these fighters, I'm telling you, and I'm telling y'all something. I'm going to tell y'all something. I've been around a few of these fighters, right? Go to these fights and shit like that. These gyms. These fighters don't give a fuck about you like that. I'm telling you. They don't. They don't really, you know what I mean? They, you know, they ain't getting their money. You know, stuff like that. You know, they gonna take care of their families. But they don't have the emotional attachment that the online boxing fans do. They don't have it. They care less, like a lot of these motherfuckers, they wouldn't piss on you if you was on fire. Whether it's Canelo, whether it's Tank, whether it's uh, Devin Haney, whether it's Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, uh, shit, uh, uh, Tyson Fury, uh, Alexander Usain, no matter what you tell yourself in your mind. Because I know a lot of these online fans, they are living their lives vicariously through their fighters, their favorite fighters. When they see they fight on the Forbes list, they are on the Forbes list. When they see they fighter, um, when they see they fighter on um, on um, on um, certain magazines or whatever, they are on certain magazines or whatever. That's how they feel. Did you get what I'm saying? So I mean, it is what it is. Shout out to AJ Planner. What do you say? You say um, it's a business 
and entertainment in the end of the day. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's just what that's just what it is. That's just what it is. You know what I mean? Sonya said, you love you some Bud. Um, yeah, I got a lot of love for Bud. I do. But I don't care for Bud. I'm not a fanboy of Bud. I know you're trying to project what you're trying to do, Sonya. You're trying to project. And this is the day I have a personal relationship with Bud. You don't have a personal relationship with Canelo. I'm very familiar with you. I know you're trying to project your emotional fanboy ways to Canelo. But guess what? You said you're 69 years old. Canelo ain't going to give you no dick. you 69 years old. You put it to a wrinkle. So you ain't got to worry about Canelo giving you no money, giving you no dick. You say you're 69 years old. You can cap all day. You don't even know Canelo. I know, bud. I've been to his house. And I don't even do content. I don't even do a lot of content on Terrence Crawford. I don't. There's no need to. So you can project... You can project your you can you can project your emotions all you want, but Son Sonya, I've been dealing with you for years. You know what it's gonna be with me. I'm gonna tell you how I motherfucking feel. Why the fuck you over here? I don't even know with your wrinkle ass pussy. You can take your bitch ass back to where you came from. Don't nobody block Sonya, but I'm telling you, I'm calling it like it is. I'm very I've been dealing with you for years. You know what I mean? I've been dealing with you for years. I'm still the same disrespectful motherfucker I was in 2021 and 2022. Ain't shit changed. When you bring your ass over here, you know what it is. Phone lines open, Sonya, 530-494-9636. Um, Any shit you want to say, call the show. Call it, what's your name, where you calling from? Adrian from L.A. Adrian from L.A., talk to me. Check it out, Coach. <clears throat> the only fight that we, that we should be wanting to see is if Benavidez and Canelo, man. How this guy gets away with it, man, it's really getting frustrating right now, Coach. It really is. Mm. Man, because, I mean, you call it right down the middle, Coach. I love your show, man, but it's just pissing me off, man. I mean, how Suleiman just keeps letting Canelo, you know, do whatever he wants. I don't know, man. How, how can that be stopped? Is there any way to stop that kind of um, behavior? Uh, well, you know, what again, I mean, this is, the, this is the business of boxing, what's going on. Canelo is a big deal. He's a big draw. So I, so I do get it. I understand certain fighters are going to have certain privileges. Canelo has that privilege, and I understand that. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, this is what it went on with Floyd Mayweather as well. This is what's going on. When you become a big draw like a Floyd, he's retired now. Canelo. So certain privileges that you you're going to have certain privileges that other fighters are not able to have now some people don't like it i get it i understand but that's the reality of the situation fam life isn't fair um and that's just how it is you you know i mean that just that just all i'm saying is team benavidez and canelo and the sanction of bodies and stuff all i'm saying is all of them are in on it they 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 have come to some type of agreement everyone know what it is this is what it's, what it's going to be and th that's all that's all i'm saying that's all I'm, I'm just laying it out there. However, it, however you take it is however you take it. That's all. Yeah, but what? Yeah, Coach, there's one more thing. But, but why have mandatories, Coach? Why have mandatories? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, why have rules if you're not going to abide by them? I hit the, I'm, I'm with right. you. Like, why have mandatories? Right. Why have rules? Why have belts? Why have purse bids? Like, why have any of this stuff? You get what I'm saying? So, yeah, we know what there, it is. There you go, Coach. There you go, Coach. Hey, I appreciate the time, man. Appreciate the time. Appreciate it, man. Man, shout out to Adrian from L.A. Salute, fam. Yeah, why have a... Uh... Yeah. Four, hey, man, 4904... Four, listen, 530-494-9636. 490... I mean, 530-494-9636. Son, you can call the show. Phone lines open. You never call the show. I've been, I've been doing... You've been following me for three years. You still ain't even called the show yet. You ain't called the show not one time. Phone lines open, though. Phone lines open. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't ducking nothing. I ain't running from nothing. Um, phone lines open. I just tag you with it. Call the number. Uh, call it, what's your name? Where you call it from? Hey, Slim. You already know DC here, baby boy. Hey, Rob, <laughs> boy, what's up, fam? Hey. So, basically, I've been right all along, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah, I've yeah, been yeah. saying yeah. from the gate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. and, and jokers want to pick sides. It just ain't a side thing. We already know. Yeah. Everybody is in cahoots with this. So if y'all motherfuckers is belly aching about what Cinnamon is, is doing and what Benavidez is doing, just boycott they fights. But Cinnamon okay because the people he really fuck with get his, get his fights for free. Mm -hmm. So what does he care? You know what I'm saying? He don't care. He's like, my Mexican folks get this thing for free. They've been getting it for free. So they cool. 
You dig what I'm telling you? So at the end of the day, Mo, y'all just better, you know, look at more boxing, look at more divisions, and you wouldn't have these problems. That's why you don't have to hear me tripping over these fights that don't get. I look at too much boxing to worry about one or two divisions. You dig? Yeah. What about all they tell y'all? I'm a 140 dude. When it wasn't cool to be 140, when it wasn't cool to say 120, 130 is a good division, I don't follow all that other shit. Motherfuckers won't do what they're going to do. But Mauricio tried to give y'all uh, 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 a a des- a designation to who was gonna get the privileged treatment, and y'all, it still ain't like that. That's what the franchise was for. Yeah. The franchise was for those fighters, correct? And yeah. y'all still belly aching. Keep in mind, he gave y'all a layup. Look, y'all upset with these certain amount of fighters that don't have mandatories the way you want them to have mandatories. We gonna create something so you know exactly what fighters that's gonna get preferential uh, preferential treatment. What did he, and y'all got mad, didn't y'all? <laughs> Y'all got mad. Yeah, so yeah, took yeah, that away. You did? Special designation, bro. Uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. To let y'all know who's the jokers that's going to get this treatment. And y'all got mad. And now y'all, well, it's not said. Well, that's why they designed that. That's why they designed that joint for y'all to know who's going to get that treatment. And y'all jokers is still mad. So at the end of the day, Y'all been look well, I don't know. A lot of y'all haven't really been looking at boxing long enough. To jokers like me that been looking at looking at boxing for decades, I know the game. You dig? I know how the WBA super got developed. I know all this. So don't get mad at Cinnamon. Don't get mad at Bena Benavidez. They're playing the game together. And if you're gonna get mad at one of the other, you gotta get mad at both of them. That's mm-hmm. the that's the shit that I don't get. Y'all yeah. need to get mad at both of them. Yeah. Not one or two. You know what I'm saying? That's all I guess, man. But uh, jokers need to cut it the fuck out. Look at more boxing. If you look at more boxing, you wouldn't be upset with Cinnamon and Benavidez is doing. I swear you won't. But that's all I got for you, Mo. DC, stand up. Rob on Fresh, man. Yeah, man. So I mean, I mean that. I mean that's just the reality of the situation, guys. Um, Ron Boy Fresh makes a point. If you're going to be mad, be mad at both, right? Because if you're if you're a diehard David Benavidez fan. You know, you want this fight for your guy, but your guy, David Benavidez, agreed to go along with the plan not to fight Canelo. And, and you know, and this is why things are going along the way it is. And then if you and then if you a Canelo fan and you want to see him fight David Benavidez, you could be upset with him that hey man, why he ain't chose him yet. So there's hopes that he's going to choose him in September. And I'm like, okay, where do you guys hear that from? Because I've been hearing online, yeah, man, Canelo going to choose, Canelo going to fight dog on Benavidez in September. And I'm like, well, who said that? Where, where, where is that coming from? There's no proof that that's what's going to happen. So we don't know. So if you're going to, and I get it, there's a hard line in the sand. I get it. But, you know, you got to look at both sides. Both sides are in agreement with what's going on. This is what I'm telling you. Team Benavidez is not upset that they're not fighting Canelo. As a matter of fact, if you're a Benavidez fan, you are more upset that Benavidez is not fighting Canelo more so than Benavidez is. Because they agreed to go along with the plan. This is what I'm saying, fam. So, you know, you can't tell me you upset in one breath that I'm not getting to fight with this guy, but you agree to a plan, sign a contract that doesn't include the guy that you want that you want to fight. Because, well, that's Canelo. He can pick and choose who he want to fight. So if everybody know that, then again, he agreed to it. This is what's going on, fam. That's all I'm saying. Let's give everybody a round of applause. And another thing, and another thing, right? David Benavidez, even if he didn't agree to go along with it, he can't make Canelo do what he don't want to do anyways. Who do you think the sanctioning bodies are going to side with? They're not going to side with David Benavidez over Canelo. And let's say David Benavidez go renegade and say, no, man, I'm finna pull up. I'm finna pull up to all the press conferences, do A, B, C, and D. Well, if you pull up, then Canelo fans are gonna be like, well, oh, man, you know, you ain't showing no respect to Canelo. You don't just pull up on him like that. You saw what happened with that one, but Demetrius Andrade did it. So it, so a lot of his fans are gonna come out and, and put him in the, and protect him. That's what they're gonna do. They're gonna protect him. So they're gonna do that, fight online, do whatever, right? And then, but just understand this, but just know that 
you got a sanctioning body. You are the WBC intern champion of a sanctioning body. And you're also the mandatory to fight the next guy in line. And the sanctioning body that you hold the belt to and are the mandatory through is telling you that, hey, look, we haven't mandated. Well, we, you, you mando, but we haven't certified it yet. So it won't be certified until March. But once we certify it, then there's no timeline of when we're going to order the mandatory to enforce it. So when you hear something like that from a sanctioning body, what are you to do? I'm just asking a, a legitimate question. What are you to do? Now we got to hear, oh, man, well, he ain't fought nobody. He ain't really deserve it. He, he, he lost his belt snorting coat. Man, that was 25 years ago. They still, listen, if you're going to bring up, if you're going to bring up David Benavidez lost his belt snorting coat, then people can still bring up uh, Canelo Alvarez being the draw chief for getting popped with Clinton being wrong. The same people that'll say, yeah, Canelo, David Benavidez is a drug, drug addict. He, he, he lost his belt twice. Oh, lost it on the scale because he was too fat and then he can't keep the coke out his nose okay the flip side of that is Canelo was a drug she got caught with Clint Buterol but y'all cool with that you see the other you, do you see it's both sides both sides of the coin both sides of the coin you argue hands and you argue tails so let's just be honest let's give everybody a round of applause Let's give a shout out to all of the uh, all of the super chats. Uh, shout out to Edwin. Hey, okay. Shout out to Stephen X. Hey, okay. Shout out to Mark. Hey, okay. Shout out to Drew. Hey, okay. Shout out to In My Opinion. Hey, okay. Shout out to Old Low TV. Hey, okay. Shout out to Al DePow. Hey, okay. Shout out to Big Tony. Hey, okay. And shout out to RJ. Hey, okay. Let's give everyone who gave a super chat a round of applause. This is the thing, man. If you dish it, you gotta know how to take it. You dish, you gotta know how to take it. It go, it, it, that sword cut, that sword cut both ways. That sword cuts both ways. Um, let's give everyone, let's give everybody a shout out that's here. Shout out to do I what does Tenderona is that? What my Tenderona list? I don't have my Tenderona list. Oh, it's over here. Shout out to the sisters, man, who showed up. Shout out to Food Revolution. Hey, okay. Uh, shout out to the lovely Miss Connie. Hey. Okay. Shout out to uh, Mimi24. Hey, okay. Shout out to La Jessica. Hey, okay. Shout out to Jackie Hernandez. Hey, okay. Shout out to Elena. Hey, okay. uh, shout out to some more women I'm forgetting in the chat. Oh, shout out to Summer in November. Hey, okay. uh, shout out to, I think, the goddess. Hey, okay. And any other sisters. I've, oh, Sheila and Callie. So shout, shout out to Sheila and Callie. Hey, okay. You know, it is what it is. You, 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 I want you guys to understand something. I have to, I, I have a I have the post on my trolls. I know my trolls very well. Some of them I've ran off the block. They returned. When you come back, you get out of line, I'm going to check you. Guess what? I don't play with my trolls. If you want to come over here with the bullshit, I'm with the shits. I'm going to win at the end of the day, especially when you ain't got enough nuts or vagina to call the show. True, true, true. Just want to throw that out there. Um, shout out to the Martin. Hey, okay. Shout out to G Daddy. Hey, okay. Shout out to um G Five Wees. Hey, okay. Uh, shout out to Tony. Hey, okay. Shout out to Ed. Hey, okay. Shout out to Brady Twelve. Hey, okay. Shout out to Jason Phillips. Hey, okay. Shout out to Superman. Hey, okay. Shout out to Corey Bradley. Hey, okay. Shout out to Flex BK. Hey, okay. Shout out to Stephen X. Hey, okay. Shout out to Five Hundred Four Top Level. Hey, okay. Shout out to uh Reborn. Hey, okay. Let's give a shout out to everyone who called the show. Shout out to John from Colorado. Hey, okay. Shout out to um. Shout out to um, Leo from A Sound. Hey, okay. Shout out to Kermit from DC. Hey, okay. Shout out to uh, Drew from LA. Hey, okay. Shout out to Jamie. Hey, okay. Shout out to Martin from Oakland. Hey, okay. Shout out to um, Unbiased Fan from Connecticut. Hey, okay. Shout out to Coach Eddie from ATL. Hey, okay. Shout out to uh, Jamal from Lincoln, Nebraska. Hey, okay. Shout out to Anthony from Texas. Hey, okay. Shout out to Rob from New York. Hey, okay. Shout out to Marco from the 714. Hey, 
Okay. Shout out to D Block from Dallas. Hey. Okay. Shout out to Casino Light Press from the ATL. Hey. Okay. Shout out to Curtis from Long Beach. Hey. Okay. Shout out to Will from Upstate New York. Hey. Okay. Shout out to uh, Derek from Florida. Hey. Okay. Shout out to Mayo from the Shy. Hey. Okay. Shout out to Martin from Jersey. Hey. Okay. Shout out to um, Adrian from LA. Hey. Okay. And shout out to my brother, man, Ron Boy Fresh from DC. Hey. Okay. Let's give all the callers a round of applause. And y'all know we did this for the hood. I want to thank the whole hood who came out here. I love y'all. I did this for the hood. Y'all know I beat that boy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is what it is. And y'all ought to know what time it is. Before we go, we got to say all praises due to the most high, the most exalted, the greatest human being on the planet Earth. There's no one who praises and give Al Heyman more credit than we do, Mr. Al Heyman. Well, you know, I guess I got to be like everybody else and think Al Heyman. <laughs> I can quit my job now, baby. Six figures, baby. You feel me? I'm about to but, but a name, a name. Do you have a name? Oh, nah, nah. I ain't got no name, you know? Name them names, man. <laughs> they know who they is. Name them names, <laughs> please. The names need to be named. They know who they is. <laughs> the Mexican monster. Hey, man, shout out to Hood Sports and Boxing. Hey, okay. Shout out to Legacy Mindset. Hey, okay. G5. Hey, hey, okay. Shout out to um, Jamie from New York. Hey, hey, okay. Shout out to my brother, man. School of X, man. Hey, okay. La Jessica. Shout out to Elena. Shout out to... NPR. Hey, okay. Salute to the natural. Hey, okay. Shout out to Crack Stream TV. Hey, okay. Jason Phillips. Hey, okay. Shout out to uh, Sam Ramdo. Hey, okay. Shout out to Bud Cheddar. Hey, okay. Brady Twelve. Hey, okay. And so uh, and uh, Soberanis. Hey, okay. Shout out to Jorge. Hey, okay. Onacio. Shout out to oh my main man Flex BK. Hey, okay. And shout out to Knockdown 305, man. Hey, okay. And shout out to Rick Timms. Hey, okay. If you sitting there watching the show, hate watching, didn't want to hit the like button, Riley, get him. Look, fuck you, fuck the plane you flew in on, fuck them shoes, fuck the socks with the bell on it, fuck them cheap ass cigars, fuck your yuck mouth teeth, fuck your hairpiece, fuck your chocolate, fuck Guy Ritchie, fuck Prince William, fuck the Queen. This is America. My president is black and my Lambo is blue, nigga. Now get the fuck out of my hotel room. And if I see you in the street, I'm slapping the shit out of you. I know what it is, man. When it comes to this boxing, y'all know what time it is. We running things. Yep, that's right. I'm running things. I'm running things. Cream corn. That's why they call me that. Smooth. I got more measure for your pleasure. Stick with me, baby. I'll have you farting through silk. <laughs> and let a nigga mess with me. I'll jump on him. All 93 pounds of pure dynamite! It is what it is, man. Y'all know what it is, man. Hey, shout out to the tenderonis, the tenderonis, the PYTs, and the honey dips. Um, salute to all the sisters. Again, you guys see me, you guys see me going off on the troll. Trust me, I'm very familiar with who my trolls are. I've been doing this a long time. So when you see me um chopping their necks off trust me it's for a reason we have history me and that sonya has history i don't know if that jason moans whoever it could be we have history i've been dealing with these guys a long time some of them are hiding behind female names or whatever i don't know and i don't care but nothing is going to change we will run them off the block because they don't have the they don't have the nuts to even call the show it is what it is shout out to the tender owners of pyt's and the honey dips much love Man, we're gonna get a doula mason on the show i'm very very happy about that man i spoke to valiant mason today on the show when he called i'm so happy you know i love and i love really love this kid a doula mason i love a lot of the young fighters that's coming up right now all of the young fighters i love all of them and um i, I think there's hope with the young fighters so i see you guys tomorrow three o'clock eastern standard time got a new short that i that i'm that i'm uploading on instagram 
that I'm uploading on Twitter. It's already no, I'm I'm I'm, I'm up, all, uploading. Sorry about that. On um, YouTube, I already uploaded the short on Instagram and on Twitter. I'm going to upload it to YouTube. See you guys tomorrow, three o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Thank you guys for sharing the show. Thank you guys for being supportive of the show. This show was nothing without you. See you guys tomorrow, three o'clock Eastern Standard Time. You know my motto: Don't meet me there, beat me there. Peace. Man, I'm out of here, bro. Let's go. Come on.